He said live, and then I had to hit record. <laughs> so, coming to you from the internet, uh, it's the Radio Statler Podcast. I have no idea how many episodes we've had, and Too I'm many. surprised nobody stopped us yet. Uh, this is Beaches. You people. We've got. Uh, uh, I'm Night Owl, studiously trying to ignore the protesters outside my window. And I'm just another guy, you know? What the hell are they protesting out there? Uh. Oh, do I have to look this up? I'll rephrase it. What are they not protesting? Uh, well, they're, they're protesting a specific thing. They are protesting a specific thing. It's. Uh, chickens as capodoros, I want to say. And what? Uh, it's some sort of uh, Yom Kippur related ritual. Okay, you got a weird part of Manhattan, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get it off the Bronx. Uh, Kaporos. K a p o r o s. Okay. Apparently, something about waving a chicken over people's heads and then you kill it and give it to the the needy for good ah, luck. That bit. Yeah. That's not a protest. No, well, no that's protesting, must be from the the oh, protesting the fact that the Department of Health isn't stopping Jewish people from doing that with chickens. You don't want to know what we do with ram's horns. Mm, I've been around there. I don't enjoy it, no. <laughs> yeah. Have we turned enough uh, people away by now? I mean, we're not, we're not... I mean, how else are you supposed to cast sin, right? <laughs> I, it's not I like don't... everybody owns a stone. But a chicken. A chicken you can do a lot with. A chicken you can ruin an entire franchise. That's true. A chicken you can get avian flu. But a chicken also, eats dreck. Also, when you're done, good eating. Speaking of which, barbecue, filet, little pan-seared something. Uh, shredded on top of lettuce with some uh, spices. A fricassee, perhaps? Nobody just burns it anymore? Well, everyone does. I mean... That's the problem. <laughs> Speaking of nibbles, uh, I hear that we're going to have apparently a hacking uh, hacking food for geeks or how to cook geek thing at Hope. Really? We're having a what? That's what I heard. I just want to confirm with you guys because you guys actually live in sort of like the real world and I'm sort of stuck in my own dungeon. Uh, I think you have me mistaken with somebody else. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know shit. I just I usually up. hear about this stuff from you, so. Oh, God, we're all in trouble. Yeah. We're screwed. We are so Wait, also, also, weren't you the one that was yelling at us about getting a rice cooker and... No, 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 that's for the disinformation desk. That's not for public consumption. Never mind. Pay no attention to the Russian hiding behind the corner. Uh, I would think that if you said voting booth, that would be more topical. Yeah, but... really. Oh, dick. I forgot to get his name in there. Vlad, right. No, the idea was that uh, this time the disinformation desk should be able to have its own food so we can man it 24-7. And then possibly, as a sort of expression of artistic creativity, mm -hmm. leave comments on the desk based on our um, ingestions. That makes sense, I think. Uh, so you're thinking like just a rice cooker, though? Well, I mean, you can you can do a lot of stuff with a rice, rice cooker. cooker. I mean, we're going to bring a coffee pot, a uh, rice cooker. Uh, somebody's going to bring a crock pot, and we're just going to uh, you know be able to feed the troops. Uh, speaking of which, I can hear the troops outside of your window, and uh, yeah, I'm really tempted to just go back there and do to them what they used to do to the drug dealers over a couple of blocks away. Just get a saucepan, fill it up with water, boil it, open a window, and drop it. The water, that is. Oh, not the pan. That would just be beyond the sale. How are we getting gold for dumping saucepans on people? Also, I'd run out of saucepans. Oh, dear. Yeah, that's true. Can't have that. I mean, or, you could also you use just, empty beer bottles. Why can't you just make it even better? Pee in saucepan, open window, drop on protesters. Yeah, but then you have to sterilize. Yeah, I mean, also... 
I, I just cleaned my fridge out recently, so I don't have any spoiled produce on hand. Do you have a chicken? <laughs> no, I ate the chicken. Uh, I mean, I don't know about the whole ritual or whatever, but I would think that uh, this sounds more humane than, say, what we do to factory-raised chickens. I'm just saying. Certainly not that much worse. <coughs> yeah. As far as I as far as I can tell, and more importantly, uh, it was a free-range chicken. chicken for a while. Yeah. I mean, more importantly, as long as it doesn't pose any sort of actual uh, health and safety hazard to anyone else, uh, people do their crazy religious rituals. Whatever. They usually do it on the subway, preaching, and the Lord will kill you if you do not sit down here. What we're talking about is waving a couple of feathers. Comparatively, compared to the the... Panhandlers on the subway these days? Uh, I'm not going to get into that. No, no, don't. We only have an hour. Yeah. Uh, I mean, no, we I don't stopped want to into, timing these things. I also don't want to get into the number of uh, times I've seen one particular guy pretend to threaten suicide. Oh, uh, him again? In order to get people to... Uh, listen to his pitch. He's a lot of fun. Yeah. And it's the same guy who uh, works the IRT in uh, on the Upper West Side. Yeah, he makes uh, Earth Angel look really intelligent by comparison. Yeah. You know it's you're in the right city when you get branded. When, when you're bombs. missing having Earth Angel on the subway with you. Yeah. Huh. Apparently drinking tequila could help you lose weight. <laughs> I'm obviously doing this wrong. I recommend starvation as a weight loss program. I mean, drink enough whiskey, you'll lose plenty of weight. You'll also lose plenty of cares. That too. So, you know, it's a win-win. Yep. Or I mean, if you're like me, you're already out of fucks, so... Um, does anybody know if the Hope uh, panel submissions is still open? I think it is, isn't it? I believe, I believe so. so. Uh, I mean, last time they were open through May. Okay. Um, do we want to do like three or four CFP? The, the deadlines now. Okay. Because I know people were talking about doing, um, Two of the same tab open. Uh, Serves you right for being a multitasker. So far, uh, they have actually not announced a closing date for the uh, Hope call for participation. That works for me. That works for me too. And everybody at NYC Twenty Six Hundred will be snookered into helping me write my multiple CFPs. I intend to break someone's record for most appearances. I'm going to fail miserably, of course. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Look, I'm. I will be very, very happy if I do not come anywhere close to, uh, my record. What was your record? Was it last year? Uh, I was supposed to show up for four. Mm -hmm. I ended up for three, but I still spent four hours on stage. So and you number. weren't talking monotonously over the same subject over and over in a spiel that we've heard 20 times before. This so that counts for a great amount. Yes. Uh, plus the showmanship at the disinformation desk, which is always a show. Right. There was that. There was uh, the late night stuff at the Lockpick Village. Um... Oh, fuck off. We have a title. Oh, fuck off. Well, it seemed appropriate. I've been watching a lot of uh, Black Adder. Dad, huh? <laughs> uh, 
Actually, I was thinking of um, uh, season th uh, series three. I wasn't quite keen on season three. Oh. Uh, I mean, really, series three and series four are my favorites. Four and two, actually. Two had two was good. Uh, I don't know. I think it's mostly the the first episode of three where they uh, end up putting Baldrick in Parliament. Oh yes, with a really large turnip. Yes. Yeah. Oh no, then I get a big uh, a big turnip in the country. <laughs> um, I'm gonna be honest right now. I have not actually watched any Blackadder. Shame. 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 I will. I'm intending on watching it eventually, maybe after I finish watching all of Seinfeld. I, I will make Why? one suggestion. Though. Why? Don't watch. That's long order. Don't watch season four until you've watched the Jeeves, Jeeves and Worcester involving uh, Hugh Laurie and Steve. Uh, yes, I am Because then you will get the joke that uh, my fellow colleague seems to have overlooked or forgotten about the boat races. Well, I haven't forgotten. You never mentioned it. Well, I... There's like 15 other things, and I was talking about series three where uh, Stephen Fry doesn't appear. No, he appears. In ser... Duke of Wellington. Oh, yes, at the very end. But, it, but he's not part of the main. No, he's not part of the canon there. He he only shows up in the final episode. I'm not intended. Yes. Yes. Or, Oops. What was it? The um. The canonette. Uh, yes. Uh, let's see. I'm not going to even try to match it in and snuck some um, some audio in. It'll just cause more problems. Well, yeah, someone else please needs to don't... this conversation. Cause... Please. I don't want to have to go through that whole copyright thing on YouTube again. After... Uh, <laughs> we, we were doing a stream like a while ago or something. I think it was on one of my personal channels on YouTube. And it was a violation of... Uh, what's yeah. John Coltrane's Tacit? It was some... Um, like... Indian folk music kind of a thing or something and Root came on and he was blasting it through and then that ends up on YouTube and then uh, it's like, your video has been silenced was like, fuck you, I just delete the damn thing No, it's like the dogma rules, you know you, there's a certain style of filming in which you are required sort of to be in penury, the only way that you can have any sort of audio mm. is either A, if it appears in the frame, or B if it is part of the scene. So you can't have like musics um, flying in the background. You can't have thematics. If you wanna have some like kill time thing, you have to whistle a tune. You know, for that shit, dogma applies. So technically what, you, what, you've, what you've described is like the first violation of copyright in a system which is designed to not have copyright problems because you would have to be present in order to do it, which would be reality. So basically, you have a copyright on reality, which means documentaries are now in deep trouble. Way to go. Fuck you, YouTube. Fuck you in the ass. <laughs> and fuck everybody now that I think about it. Sometimes in comedy, you have to generalize. Might as well. Hmm. Saves time. <laughs> And, you know, uh, snappy delivery is key. Timing. Timing, exactly. timing, timing. All right. Timing. So, dead air. Timing. And what was the other one? Uh, oh, yes. Timing. Timing. Mm. No, wait. Rubber chickens. Oh, uh, yeah, timing. you're right. Timing. I need more rubber chickens, actually. Now I have to figure out where the last of my sticky chickens are. You have sticky chickens? Yeah. What the you heck? Don't? No, I don't have a sticky chicken. I don't even have a rubber chicken. No, uh, it's it's the little tiny rubber chickens. Oh really? Doesn't that make them rubber chicks or rubber eggs? No, no, they're they're still chickens. They're just small. Itty bitty teeny weeny chicken. 
No, not that that small. They're more like a rubber ducky. Uh, they're like three, four inches. So it's a decent rubber ducky sized chicken. You know, Look I at don't... that instead of being entirely out of frame. Hmm. I don't have enough uh, ducks Echo. either. But they they were the they were the things that uh, oh, who let him in here? Uh, bring bags up to conferences, and they'd be and the hotel would be scraping them off the ceiling for weeks Blink. after. Oh, the blinky thingies, yeah. What? No, the 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 sticky rubber chickens. The sticky rubber chickens. Yeah. So I'll tell you what. I'll look it up. I'm going to pass off the job and grab the word and pull the. There you go. All right. Yeah. I gotta. No, I was just I was just saying that I needed to. I still have a couple of sticky chickens hiding somewhere. Oh, I've got about a hundred, like literally. Well, Really about 100. <laughs> I, uh, Rance and I did not uh, overlap at conferences very much, so uh, it was only, uh, I think I ended up with a couple after uh, ShmooCon a few years ago. I, uh, I got mine um, from, uh, we did a memorial at his house. Oh. Uh, and uh, when we were leaving, well, while we were there, they had a big bowl of them out, uh -huh. and, uh, like, a, like a big bowl. And apparently people didn't understand you were supposed to take them for yourself. And so uh, a few of us went out to get some white Russians. And when we came back, everybody had kind of broken up and left. And so we were the only ones left. And so we had to clean up a bit. And then... Um, his dad was like, you guys want to take those chickens? And we're like, yeah. And so uh, it was me and uh, Banshee. And we just took, just stuffed all of our pockets with these chickens. <laughs> and so now I've got a, literally a hundred of them sitting in an urn at home. And it's, uh, I forget they're there all the time. So it's going to be like 10 years and I'm going to show up to a conference with like a ton of them where we're going to stick them to the hotel ceiling again. Why did this come up? I have no idea. How did we get here? I mean, you were you were here when we got onto the whole oh. chicken thing. This is uh, okay. this is not my beautiful house. Uh, right. How did how did we get here? <sighs> well, dead air. I yep. don't know. Everybody says dead air. I have a thing. So do we want to uh, we want to do a panel again this year? Yes. Only if they're yes. supplying us with free drinks. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I can provide drinks. Yeah. I, no, I, no, no, no. Let them provide drinks. They, they don't, don't provide. Pro they drinks. got a lot of fans. Look, as long as look, as long as someone provides drinks, I'll actually try to not get heat stroke again. Yeah. I'm a, I'm I mean, every, you should just I'm, avoid getting heat stroke to begin with. Well, I, I always try, and every year I seem to fail, so. I'm, I'm telling you, you got to drink water at least once. See, do what Johnny's doing. You have to drink water in the summer in the city. You can hide it. You can pretend it's vodka. I don't care. That's the problem. You, you, you missed the bag of canteens that I had. The ones that were filled with whiskey. No. No, Wait. those are the bottles. You had water? Yes. The whole time? I had like eight liters of fucking water. Oh. You hit the fact well. All right, so it just sounds like what happened was you just got sick. Well, no, it was that I spent Thursday doing load-in, and most of that time was spent unloading the truck. And I did not manage to hydrate properly between then and... Remember that? Yeah. Friday. yeah, I remember that. So I was feeling really lousy, and I had uh, there was a lot of other stuff going on too that was not helping that situation. Uh, so I mean, Friday, I ended, I, ended up, I ended up calling it quits uh, and going home to sleep for uh, the night. And that's why I uh, missed the first panel that I was supposed to be on. Yeah. 
<laughs> the rest of the rest of the weekend I was okay. Um, does anybody have a means of streaming a video to the uh the this? To the what? To the podcast? Um, um what video and why would you do this? <laughs> I do. I uh I have a commercial. You're in a commercial? Whoa, whoa, whoa. When did you go to commercial radio? I don't think it was commercial radio. You were an actual, like, a legit video commercial, right? Yeah, hang on. I have it. Oh, yeah. I could probably pull that off, but, uh, real talk, is this gonna get the shit in trouble with YouTube for posting a commercial? Is that gonna be a problem? How could that be a problem? If anything, we're generating revenue for third party. I don't know. YouTube's fucked up. Copyright's weird, man. They do weird shit for weird reasons. I know they do weird shit. There's a reason I'm a not-for-profit and non-commercial. I, I don't... If we all scream incoherently over the audio. But that defeats Just the like purpose. That. Does it? Does it really? Come on. We heckled uh, Side Pocket when he showed up in, uh, what was it, Mr. Robot? You have no problem with that. Oh, uh, you know what? I need to catch up and actually watch the season where Side Pocket, is, Side Pocket is in it. I don't watch that show, so... I no. never got interested. I just felt like heckling it the whole time. Uh, as one show. Because it's so not <laughs> credible. I mean, I, I it's television. It it's definitely not going to be credible. Yeah, I but the people... Time, and then... Uh, the, whole, the whole heroin withdrawal thing made it really difficult for me to give a shit about the show and then you made a typo that's right jack, jack? so so jack. so jack 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 five seconds can we kick him i mean <laughs> i'll do it personally jack. Yeah. All right. It works. You if you just mic. turn your mic off, if you're working, can't talk, man. I'll slow down. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> right, but turn your mic off so that we don't have to hear you type. Or at least get a better keyboard. Something that goes to uh. you get eight characters. <laughs> your coworkers have to have to listen to that garbage. Who the fuck does that? Uh, him apparently. Oh my god. <laughs> Hold on, let me get my uh, Model M out. <clears throat> oh, yeah, please. That. That's something you do when you're by yourself in a, an enclosed room in your own house. Like, oh. uh, masturbating. You know, you gotta keep that contained. Yeah, I'm sure it's... Work, the work somewhere down. where, uh... not allowed to even talk, and yet that keyboard is acceptable? Who the hell... <laughs> That, that is not a proper model. <laughs> the rest uh, of the caps hitting the board just does not make enough sense. No, no, no. Uh, it's a M52. Isn't there a view only link? Like, who joins a podcast when they can't talk? That's so, we no longer do that because uh, I don't have enough of an uplink, I guess. Well, there was that, and then there's the whole thing about how we're not doing the on-air thing anymore. Well, because they got rid of it. Right. Honestly, I think uh, maybe after this hope, we should consider changing formats to being an actual podcast with just audio only. Ooh, that reminds me. And get us uh, off of uh, YouTube. Yeah, I've got some uh, audio editing software that's geared specifically for podcasting. It's something I use at work. They have an offshoot that they do podcasts with. Hmm. Uh, who has all the audio from years past? All the audio? For yeah. Radio I mean, Statler or for the podcast? For Statler, because what we can do uh, is... It's all online. In that case, we yeah, better you get some time, and then... Because I no, think it's all our, This is our decade year. This We're like 10 yes. years old. Yeah, this is, this is year 10. So we might as well, you know, reissue... Classic Radio Statler, you know, and charge him with up the wazoo for it. The all good proceeds will go to the uh, survival of the Trojan Wars, yes, um, and we'll do a beer fund uh, or the uh, you know keep Thurman upright type thing. 
And what the hell am I looking Time for? Time out and just no. appreciate. I want to know. It's an okay. image. Everyone look what? at Johnny. Johnny? It's an image, so I can't click to learn more now. But <laughs> something compels me to really, like, desire to learn more about what's happening here. <laughs> oh, my God. Get paid before midnight tonight. Yeah. I mean, right. I wish I had a URL or something on here. Yeah. Um, not a quick, quick, get rich, quick skip. Yeah. Um, huge paychecks in your name. Huge. <laughs> right. Do you have a video that you want me to share? I will, I will... I have a video file. Can I kick hey, it to Johnny, you need to, you need to uh, fix that. Yes. You need to fix that text. You guys figured out I got to be off air for a couple of moments. You, you, oh, that's not my text. I, I legitimately had nothing to do with that. I'm not sure what's going on there. <laughs> oh, wait, no, they do say not a scam. Okay, never mind. Yeah. I'm sure there's a backstory I haven't been given. Um, if you... How big is the file? Uh, do you have a you have a Google account? Obviously, do you want to put it on? You can put it on Drive and share the link with me. Is there something I can do to just stream it? Um, if you do right. share your the issue is is that if you do share your screen, unless you do something with the audio, so that also gets shared, we'll only see the video. Okay. So far uh, as I know. Uh, but if I have the video uh, and. I can share my screen, and the audio will get picked up by um, OBS, and then everything should be fat, dumb, and happy. Okay. I'll have to try and upload this from this hotel Wi-Fi. Hey, hey you know what? This is not the worst hotel Wi-Fi that we've had experience with. Do you remember that time that I was uh, sounded like I was coming from the moon? Several times. Was it several times? I thought it was just like once. There, there were a few. Oh, it was pretty bad last night. We'll see what happens here. I mean, I think one of the very first episodes ended up being called uh, "Radio Stadler on the Moon" because of how bad your audio was. Yes, uh, I think it was like episode four or something. Yeah, but that that went on for quite a while. Yeah. Anyway, uh, while we wait, um, let me. I... I'm taking a copy of that picture, and I'm saving it as johnnyscam.jpg. This is going to get a little weird for a hot second. Come on. Ah. Did that work? Kind of. Ah! <laughs> yes! Uh... Well, we figured out how to... <laughs> this radio.hope.net slash archive you can get all of the uh, beautiful, wonderful mp3 and aug formatted uh, files from radio.hope.net slash archive uh, and I'm actually going to look at writing a PHP script, I know. Uh, was, there, that will... was there nothing in 08? That is uh, out of my knowledge. I'm not 100% sure. Um, because I wasn't there in 08 or 2010. Uh, my first year was like 2012. Because I had like, I just had just graduated college went and did hope uh got stranded in new york city it was a big thing it was great um so 2012 2014 uh are years that uh, like i did mostly archiving and then uh 2016 uh actually it ended up being that my wife did most of the the huh. coming and stuff so. i bet i bet stop i has a bunch of it just guessing maybe uh hooter uh, yeah, my meeting would probably be on Cooter, but, uh, this is, you know, this is, uh, Sliqua is, like, his, him and Alex's thing, so I would expect that if he did have it, it would probably already be up here. Well, I've got some of these materials, because some of this looks very familiar, and I think I was there from 
from 2008. Mm -hmm. So well, I might have some of that material still. Well, I don't Neo, know what Horror know that, 2009 is. I know that Neo and I um, did our first show in uh, 2010. Okay. I know but, I was there. And I know I was there the year before because that was part of the welding hour and um, <coughs> excuse me, and the uh, the cheese show. The cheese show. I, I know. Twenty six o'clock. I was there the hope before we built the booth the first time. When we had that inflatable cushion, so that I think was two thousand eight. Oh eight. Yeah, so we should have the first, first, time, the first right. time that we had the booth was 2010. Oh, was, man. I was there the year before Adam Savage was there. What is uh, this thing? Oh, so this is... 2006, but was there... I'm going to guess 2006. I've been coming since H2K2. I don't know when the radio started. Yeah, well... Uh... It had to be running at least by 2010 because that's when Neo and I did our first show. It was definitely prior to 2010. At it least was definitely. It I'm, had to be 2008 or earlier. 2008 so, was the year that they had Adam Savage. Based on the panel submission that we did in 2016 for the panel. We had said, since 2008, Radio Statler has been broadcasting original content from Hope to the rest of the world. Interviews with huh. speakers, extended Q&As, panels, and the occasional glimpse into everything that happens outside the talk rooms. We'll take you through how and why we started, which we didn't really do. Uh, the obstacles we faced running a temporary radio station. Eh. Some of the war <laughs> stories, yes. Yes. Uh, of the things that have gone terribly, terribly wrong along the way. Thurman. Pretty much the only thing that we really went over was the war stories of things that have gone terribly, terribly wrong. Me getting stuck in New York, uh, well, all of us getting stuck in New York, essentially. Uh, the time that the U-Haul got towed. Uh, that would help. <laughs> all kinds of shit, so. Um, how do I share this? Huh? I'm trying to figure out how to share something from Google Drive. We have a 4.6 gig MP3, good lord. Well, so the 4.6 MP3 is literally the entirety, so some guy... I, I know it's a continuity, it's just I'm quite impressed, amazed, and horrified at the same time. I don't remember it being 4.6, I remember it being like 9 gig. But uh... I remember it being some huge, ridiculous number, I remember having downloaded it, and then I remember crashing my entire system. Yeah. It was, uh, any time that I had to do audio editing for it, I would pretty much hit, like, open that file, and then go do something for an hour and a half, because that's how long it took for Audacity to load the damn thing. Audacity actually has gotten better. Yes. I, I can't believe I've actually said that. I, everybody drink, I actually said Audacity's gotten better. Um, it's a little bit more oh, time. So, it's about time it was. But uh, I've been working with um, with Hindenburg of late, and it's really a piece of cake to work with. And it's just, it's, uh, yeah, Hindenburg, I'll bring up, uh, for the part of my typing. Anyway, so Johnny, if you see my screen, if you have, like, the file in Drive. What? If you yeah. look at that, you can go share, and then you should be able to. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's see if I can like, share do screen. that. Um, also, there's, yeah, I'm the, the, uh, there's, there's some members of the Twitch community who are apparently, <laughs> I don't know if Jacku, uh, ran this commercial or what, but there's pictures of me coming up here that are, that are great here. Okay, let me share this. One. Um, how did I share my screen before? Uh, there should be three dots in the right corner, and the first option on that menu when you click on it is just share screen. Uh, there we go. Here's a... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you look at the book. <laughs> That's beautiful. You know, this is turning into like one of those nightmare stock image type things. <laughs> Johnny, are you selling what, insurance? What do you have there? You've, you've got like a small penguin there. I'm gonna send. I'm sending. I'm trying to share the video that this is from. Uh, we'll be. Whoa. I'm just thinking. How totally ashamed will we be of knowing you? 
man, it's great. It's a good time. I, uh, I'm not, let me, uh, talk to Jackie really quick to see where he has this going on because our plan, well, I don't want to announce what our plan is or was in case it's still a plan, but, uh, you might, you may, uh, you may see this on your television. Television? Uh, you happen to be unemployed uh, and are awake during the wee hours. Uh, so my interest is peaked. I don't. I don't know what to say. It, it looks like you're trying to sell law services. To, it's, uh, have you been wronged by uh, a former employer and have been? Where did Cortana the- touch you? <laughs> pretty funny you should say that it's it's my money and i want it now (laughs) anyone with the link can view all right beaches where do i put this uh you can put it in uh directly to me on put it in the twitter uh group chat yeah okay oh yeah that thing that Um, thing That thing with the who's it's with the what's it's. Alright, let's see if this works. Oh, that's are beautiful. Pro- are they still protesting choked chickens out there? Nope. People have nothing oh, better to do yeah. with their lives. Like regular chickens, even? Alright. It's gonna get weird again, guys. How okay. we knows the difference? Yeah. Alright, so. Yeesh. Does the audio work? Uh, no. No. I, I think it's a good idea that it doesn't. Hello, I'm a professional hackler. Yeah, now I there's... play one on TV. And for oh, some strange reason, really sounded like me. Who is this? <laughs> Don't you know your own lines, man? Open door connect to, more F's. The rest of us are linked to All this, right? right? It's in. Uh, it's on Twitter, man. It's in the Twitter. Uh, it's an MOV. Damn it! Um, don't, uh, don't send it around. What the? You're, you're effectively it on I, I, really... I, I'm, I'm ashamed to know use use plurals, but that's why I hang around. All right. I'm going to have a lot of fun with it, and uh, the the less of the general public who knows about it, the better. Which, Which is why we're that. showing it on the podcast. <laughs> exactly. Hold on. No one watches it. Let's see. It's true. That isn't a true statement. Yes. So obscure. Nope. Nobody in the right mind ah, would do it. There we go. I don't know why. Oh, I know why. I know why. Oh, you're failed. <clears throat> so. Um, nail, I was casting keys earlier this week, and my fingernails look moldy. <laughs> I don't know what to do about it anymore. Grow them out and trim them. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying on the grow them out part. I'm really focusing heavily. All right. So nobody else will be able to hear this except for our people watching on the actual podcast. And I apologize yeah. about that. Even better. All right. Here we go. Wait for the beauty. Oh hi. Didn't see you come in. Standing nope. up on my bird. Nope. Not working. Hey. Oh, uh, it's working for me. Or a bird it knows? Been injured in an All right, accident. So this no is just for beaches. Own. Has it been implicated in a crime it did not commit? Harassed or assaulted as part of a hunting accident? The law offices of Jakabowski, 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 and Christmas could get your bird the compensation it deserves. We also offer the following services divorces and family disputes, immigration and migration assistance, bird flu vaccination, autism case settlements patent filings, and many more. Call our offices toll-free at 1-833-4-BIRD-LAW and one of our peril eagles will pass your information along to our talented counsel. Jakubowski, 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 and Christmas. Anyone else? And you're just winging it. What is all of that? That is just terrible. <laughs> Who are they well, yelling uh, at? What, it's, um, what do you do? Nut job, it's some nutjob animal rights activists outside my window 
What did you do to them? Nothing. They think he's Jewish and real guy behind I it. Unknowingly moved in down the street from a person who works for the local Department of Health. Okay. And apparently they aren't um, abusing their authority to stop people from using chickens in a religious ritual. You see, Johnny, what we need here is a lawyer, someone who can spe speak up for the people who have backwards ways, you know, like believing in animal sacrifice or casting of sin or, you know, scapegoating, literally. So some nut job with nothing better to do other than pull everybody else's putt has decided to take it upon themselves to fight the good fight and save the chickens from actually being a sacrament. What is, what's the, the numbers on that? Like, how many chickens are we losing a year to that? And nationally. All you need is one. In New York, like, I'm interested. I would accept the national number. Uh, like, it's, a, really, it's enough that, like, they, they, there's an angry mob about it. Like, well, is it a, yeah, but these are the same. PETA. Yeah, but these are the PETA type of people who protest anything uh involving animals like literally you should uh, they would probably protest if they found out that i used to have a house cat they would protest anything that resembles wearing hair let alone fur they, basically I, you know what I, i've got a good description for them um they are self-hating yeah. animals or or do they what? 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 You... Chickens don't look like they have hair. What, like, what are you getting at? That the people who are protesting are self-loathing animals. They resent the fact that they themselves are animals. They probably well, wish they were born vegetables. Being angry and yelling at buildings when they could be doing something fun. Yeah, right. but a building you shake your fist at and you walk along. Uh, I no, I'm I really like. Do they have, they had to have had like a public, I don't know, a website or something. Like, yeah, no, they, like, no, like they didn't much. decide, like they didn't roll the dice. They didn't roll the like p protest dice and today came up with chicken and sacrifice. And they said, that's what we're going to protest. You're, you're forgetting like, the third part, which is anti-Semitism. Something happened. Oh, wait, Jews sacrifice yeah. chicken? Yeah. yeah. Some do as part of a ritual called Kaporos, uh, which is performed uh, as other Yom Kippur. Uh, actually, it's Purim. Oh, is it? Yeah. Wait, so, like, aren't Jews and possibly Islamists, is that what we call them, Islamists? Muslims. Um. <laughs> well, there's, there's Muslims and then there's Islamists in the same way that there are Christians, and then there are oh, is Islam enthusiasts. Um, like, don't they? Uh, aren't they known for their like having the most um, few, uh, Why are you thinking of that word? Means of killing animals. I mean, there's no that, that there's a Santeria that litter the public parks in my area with. Uh, the remains of their animal sacrifices. Yeah, they kill pigeons, and they don't. They just like straight I up. Mind if it was pigeons, off. it's it's the goats and chickens and turkeys that I I object. Oh, to. that's. I mean, that's cool. They can get their hands up. Like, do you know what a goat costs? This is New York. You can get anything. There, there, there are actually um, uh, companies that specialize in providing animals for. Uh, religious observances. Oh, so they provide like shitty goats, like not not I, ones I that are city goats, not shitty goats. City goats. Slight slight difference in the pronunciation. It's like a good goat, like a good tasty goat. That's an expensive thing to like buy to just like right. kill in the park. Yeah, but it's so damn tasty. Right. I'm, so I'm. Really like, you no, know, the problem is that you uh, don't need, need a lot of a lot of these people don't eat the animals that they sacrifice. Right, and so like if you're, I, I understand that, and so 
if you're going to sell goats for religious usage, you're going to be raising non-tasty goats, which I assume would cost less money because they're, the demand for them is much smaller. Good. And also, you don't have to invest a lot of money into fattening them up. <laughs> non sequitur, actually. It, it may be a correlation, but nah. No, I take it back. I take it back. Yes, it is for theoretically Yom Kippur because it acts as a religious meal. It is used technically as an um, as a substitute for the scapegoat, which does have a deep tradition. It's also one of the few things that I really hated in that movie Seven. They never made made um, proper use of it, but it is basically an expiation device. Well, and more, they chose more the importantly oh. is that since uh, that this same group that's now screaming in the street uh, outside my window um, lost a lawsuit three year over three years ago. In which they attempted to get the city to officially ban this ritual. Okay. Basically, they're a bunch of anti Semites because they chose the wrong place, the wrong time, the wrong reasons, and the wrong horse. I mean, next thing you know, we're going to say that, uh, no, actually, the, uh, what was it, the 18th Amendment should still continue to apply to sacrament. That's the logic of it. But then again, this is America in the 21st century, and I expect everything to go to hell in a fucking handbasket. So there you have it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know. This is all stupid, and I don't like these protesters outside my house. You know, if they're going to be a pain in the ass, they should at least have shown up with a couple of barrels of whiskey and gotten it over with. If they did that and were quiet about it, I'd be outside with them. See? So here's the lesson. If you want to have a good protest, bring whiskey, be quiet, just show up. Yeah. Although, I mean, at that point, uh, we would actually be breaking the law. Uh, Only because of the whiskey, right? Yeah. Civil disobedience. I mean, is it really a protest if you don't go to jail? I was afraid you were going to go down that road. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yes. I'm kidding. I'm being facetious. I mean, I have successfully protested uh, outside the homes of several local elected officials without ever going to jail for it. That's good. I flipped the bird. Oh I mean, wait, I wanted to avoid that at this moment. It was it was a lot less effective than Johnny will throw the book at you with the bird body. Having than having dinner with their family and just casually mentioning, by the way, your spouse is an asshole for supporting this particular measure. The only measures I support are metric. I'm okay with imperial measures as long as uh, they're. Get thee to, to thy corner! At, hey. Dueling at 50 paces! There is, there is nothing wrong with uh, enforcing proper use of imperial measurements when it means making sure that you don't get a short pint. Ah, so you want the legacy units. Right! At which point I jump up and scream, NEVER UNDERESTIMATE THE PREPONDERANCE OF AND RELIANCE UPON PAST END-OF-LIFE LEGACY SYSTEMS FULFILLING MISSION CRITICAL ROLES! Like heights. Yes. And things like that. Yeah, well, I mean, also in England there is so much uh, infrastructure built into um, enforcing the uh, the proper measures of alcohol that uh, it would actually be a, a serious um, economic 
a serious financial problem for them to try to switch it over to metric. They've only had 30 years, first off. And well, second off, they've only had Brexit, so obviously they can't be metric. I just want to see them bring back pounds. The thing is that actually it is only the pint that is still uh, enforced by law. Last I checked, pint was, uh, let's see. Uh, In England, spirits can only be served in increments of 25 milliliters. Wait. Okay. No, 25 millis? Yep. Per shot? I think so. I thought it was more than that. Mm. No, that's the minimum measure. 25, 30. Maybe I just drank more than that. 60 would well, yeah, be no, what kind of fills up like a shooter glass. But like right. an actual shot glass is going to be 25 to 30 mil. Okay, so that's going to be the 75. All right. That makes right. sense. So, so I mean, in, in England, just about... Uh, they don't really serve a lot of spirits, and the ones that they do these days are usually in bottles mounted in a in a special rack behind the bar, mm-hmm. and they have a special spigot so that when you order a shot or a glass of one of those spirits, the bartender just takes the glass and presses it to the spigot under that bottle, and it automatically dispenses exactly 25 milliliters. Wouldn't it be easier if the hamster just went up to the spigot? Well, that's only if they are licensed for bottle service. Learn something new every day. Radio Statler! The more you know. Uh, So I I will take that. Uh, But I would uh, counter with, uh, in most, like... Like Germany, if you go and order a pint, you get half a liter of beer. Like right. you get 500 mil, which is divisible by 25. So that shouldn't be an issue. And well, you get more beer. Right. It's not. It's not an issue of, of the unit of measure. Mm. It's the fact that there is physical infrastructure built around a specific unit of measure. So in England. Mm-hmm. Uh, for many, many, many decades, all licensed premises have been required to um, only serve beer in glasses that are approved to hold exactly one pint. And they have, uh, and the glasses are actually designed specifically to indicate when they have been filled to the correct level. Okay, yeah. Uh, so they will have, like... Yeah, they have a line. Or etchings or various other features in them. Yeah, I have a glass like that. I have a bunch from Germany that it's... It's point five. It's comma 5L. Right. Line. Right. This is where you fill to when right. we serve you a beer. Yeah. Yeah, I'm on board. So the thing is that in, in England, if uh, they were to legally change... If they were to change the act of law mm-hmm. that requires serving beer in... Uh, pints to uh, half milliliters or half liters um, they would have to replace all of that glassware well so only if you didn't have any and the taps and all the other equipment that goes into mechanically forcing those units of measure Mm, okay so it's not just the glasses they have a bunch of other like the, the tap, the tap the only apps, dispenses, blah, everything, is everything is... okay. around getting exactly X number of uh, legally appropriate servings. Yeah. Because mm. if it was just the glasses, then you just make a several year long thing, stop producing right. the old pint glasses, and make be, a new ones, know, and as break, they break, break people buy somebody. the new ones, and then you're okay. Right. Um, it, it, but for like but a lot of other, mm-hmm. there's a lot of other infrastructure behind it, up to and including the way that the size of the kegs that are used. Right. Yeah. Okay. 
I feel like you could probably still, if given enough game of a game plan and, and lead time, yeah, no, if you, you could probably just switch over over the course of like a decade. Right. No. If you gave, if you had enough lead lead uh, lead time, it would be less um, impract. It would it would probably be practical uh, financially and logistically. It's or that no one particularly feels the need to force the British to stop drinking pints. I mean, on one hand, sure, and on the other hand, yeah, if it's uh, not broke, don't fix it, right? So. Right. I mean, the only reason that most of the rest of Europe um, settled on the half-liter uh, as the standard size of a glass of beer is because they had already adopted the metric system before, well before they adopted a standardized or a, a legal standard for uh, measures of, of beverages. And I mean, really, have you I'm ever not so anal. Have you ever had a quarter liter of beer? It's not enough. It's a can. It's not enough. No, a quarter oh. liter would be too much. Nope. Quarter you can liters, never have too much. Uh, less no. than four, a... liter. four liters is a good. Much. It's too much to consider a single serving. Like, say you don't like the beer that much, but you got a whole fucking liter of it you got to get through. Right. Why did of... you order a full liter? And then you have to get each beer in a. Li I'm saying like, where you wouldn't order a liter. You ordered a liter because the king decided that that was the the uh, single serving size for a. Serving of beer. What are we well, now? So the, the FDA uh, say this is a portion control yeah, issue. I mean, so a pint is like a half a liter, which is usually what beer is sold at. You would be able to get a quarter of a, a pint, pint for tasters. Pint and a half liter are very close. They're very, very close. And the, the not exact. They are very close. Sure. The whole concept of the taster is extremely modern. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Ten years ago, you wouldn't go to a bar and ask if you asked for a taste of something. They'd be like, no. What? Yeah. It tastes like beer. Right. Get yeah. out. No, the the whole idea of the flight or taster or any of the other stuff is much more recent. The closest historical uh, predecessor uh, was the half pint uh, for for beer, or. Um, but isn't the half pint like the standard serving? No. No, uh, one pint. Oh, half pint. I'm sorry. Yeah. Right. It's half like pint. a kilo. You know, the kilo is the standard, but the gram is actually what it's derived from. The half yeah. pint is what you uh, is what you do if you are trying to really only stop in for a quick drink. Hence the swift half. Or it's what you get. A, a, there's certain. I don't know if it, maybe it's in Illinois law or what, but certain regulations require a limitation on the amount of beer in a single serving that can be served based on the alcohol content. What country are you talking about? I this think is it's America. They'll, they'll give you 32 ounces. Oh, like, here, let me find it. In Illinois, at least, if I think if it's over 12 or 13, you get it in a six ounce pour. Oh, well, yeah, because at that point, legally, it is not beer. Yeah. What? Wait. The, yeah. I don't, like, and that's where the, I, going back to tasters, like, the whole reason we have tasters and everyone's accepted that that's okay is because, like, people have stretched the idea of what beer even is so far right. that you're like, can I have a taste of that? It might not be beer, and I want to check. Right. I mean, that there's that whole thing, what is it, the, the end of history? Was that beer that could spontaneously combust? The end of history? What? I've, what? The, the, it's some... Um, uh, hold on. It was the thing that it was the beer that came in a taxidermy scroll. Okay, this is getting too weird. And it's a beer. Is it, this a book uh, or a movie? No, it's a. You ever hear of a thing called fluorination? Fluorination of water. Dog, right? The end of history. Scottish craft beer company. Did it water now? Where did... The end of history beer made by the Brewdog Brewing Company. Oh, yeah. I thought 
the end of history was the title of a book or movie. No, and no, it, no. It was it was a reference to the Hitchhiker's Guide. Yeah. Yeah. for lunch. It sounds yeah. very Douglas Adamsy. Yeah. And like the world ended because of it. We finally created a beer so powerful that it could spontaneously combust, and we right. ended. Right. Oh, so it's, it's, it's even, even, that is a Terry Pratchett book plot, if I've ever heard one. What if we got an AI drunk? So, How would you get an AI drunk? I'm just thinking. You can't that one just over. give it alcohol, like overvolt something, like <laughs> overclock something, okay. undervolt yeah. something. So, so this, this, this yeah. from Futurama. This beer was supposedly a blonde Belgian ale with a 55% alcohol content. Yes. That's not a beer. Uh, this 55% beer should be drank in small servings whilst exuding an enduring suit of vigilance and reverence for Mr. Stout. This is to be enjoyed with a weather eye on the horizon for, for inflatable alcohol industry Nazis, judgmental washed up neo prohibitionists, or any grandiloquent. Grandiloquent, ostentatious foxes. Neither pretentious, one. pretentious, pretentious bullshit. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the point is, at 55% alcohol by volume, by most technical definitions, that shit ain't beer. Once you cross, like, the 15 threshold, you're no longer a beer. Right. So that was, that was the point that Johnny was getting at, which is these things that are labeled as beer despite having ridiculous yeah. double-digit uh, alcohol yeah. contents. I'm looking through here, and I think it's, these are these are states. Yeah, these are state limitations as to the, the yeah. maximum out, number of ounces beers over certain alcohol contents can be served in a single serving are. Yeah, uh, in the U.S. Um, or drinks of us of yeah and it's not I, I keep using the word beer erroneously right, because, it's it's yeah. beverage, alcoholic beverages right because at a certain point it's no longer beer right because there are yeah the same reason you can't order a pint of vodka in a bar I well mean, you could you wouldn't uh, be served it they could they can't I, I have i have done it i also have done so I, I, I'm, I'm sure you can that. find your local dive that will skirt the law, maybe because they know you or just need the money. Uh, well, I need the drink. In, in many places that do actually have um, those sorts of regulations. You can order the pint of vodka in individual two-ounce serving. Right. I <laughs> did a couple of times. Right, I mean, you can... Bring a pint glass in and just order enough shots to fill it. I need 60 shots of vodka and a pint glass. Better yet, how about I just buy the bottle? You give me a glass. Because they would need to be licensed yeah. bottle service, which oh, is right. a much more common limitation than um, specific limitations on serving size. And in Illinois, bottles the minimum you're going to pay for a bottle service vodka is 300 I can't imagine what it is in New York. What? It's not cheap. Yeah. And it also depends on the type of establishment. Mm. Or versus yeah, it's vodka. It's 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 name brand, but it's not. You know, you're, you're not getting anything worth three hundred dollars. I don't even know what a three hundred dollar bottle of vodka would be. I have, I love, I'm a vodka fan. I have some great vodkas, and I've never paid maybe over seventy dollars for well for a fifth. But yeah. that's the markup. Also, like with the three hundred dollars, you're getting access to a private booth, right? Else, you're getting um, mixers for free. Your orange juice and your sodas and right. such. And you're getting, you do get a waitress who still serves you the drinks, who mixes and serves you your drinks. So that's all part of like the bottle service thing. Like you're not, it's not just like you go to the bar and go give me that bottle for 300 bucks and then you walk back to your table with a bottle. No, that's usually how I come into the bar. Right. Most bars, you walk into it with your, 
Fine, you know what? So I'm just gonna drink this here. I hope that's okay. Well, I'll no, you know, for a short break. I'll be back in a couple minutes. Three, like if they have a packaged goods license, they might sell you that bottle for three hundred bucks if you're taking it to go. I'll be like, oh yeah, here you go. <laughs> It's uh, it'd be more interesting, um, like a corkage fee, like you come in with your own bottles, just like we did that. We we looked at that once. Uh, we had like like a cheap like ten dollar bottle of wine, like one or two that had been left unopened, and so we had like dinner reservations, and so we called up and was like, "Hey, do you guys like? Uh, is there a corkage fee? Like, if we bring bottles of wine, can you serve that to us?" And they were like, "Yeah, it's like forty bucks a bottle." I was like. So no, no. So the cost no, of a no, bottle, no. and then the same again. <laughs> so you want to charge me how much to open this ten dollar bottle of wine? I'll just keep it in the car. We'll drink that later. <laughs> Sounds about right. Oh man. Yeah. So. So Johnny. Yeah. I, I have been away from Twitter for a few days. Um, mm -hmm. I was distracted by Mass Effect. No, oh, I. Um, There's a Mass Effect. What? I, I I have also been away from Twitter for a few days, but not because of Mass Effect. Right. Okay. Yes. Um, Is there a new Mass Effect? Like another one? Or you just... Andromeda. Okay. Yeah, that's not new. New. It's just I finally actually got it. Yeah. Um, I... Okay. Anyway, uh, back to the point I was trying to make. Uh, that uh, cross lock you had. Yeah. Uh, where you had that fancy tool and everything. Yeah. There's a much easier way to do it without yeah. any fancy tool. Okay. Uh, because just about every single... I don't know if, if there's a much easier way. There is. With that tool, it was literally like insert and open. It was like yeah. it was like no. This is this is almost exactly the same thing, okay. except you don't have to spend like eighty dollars on a special tool. Sure. Okay. Because the thing is, almost all of those locks only actually have pins on three of those sides. No. Oh, okay. The fourth side is empty. So, you take a standard tension tool and you put it in the side that has no pins in it. Mm hmm. And then you take whatever rake you happen to like, and you just scrub one side, then the other, then the other. Pop, pop, pop. Right. I will try and that tomorrow. In like, it takes maybe three seconds longer than doing yeah. it with the dedicated right. tool, except you're not carrying around a dedicated tool that only works on one thing. Right. Um, I'll try it tomorrow. Something, yeah. something, something, no unit taskers. I was, I was playing with that safe again today. Nice. Uh, yeah, this 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 class is just bananas, and it uh, looks like well, it. A cool thing. It's definitely not focusing on like, you know, hey, let's fill up your days with obscure crap you'll never come across just to add the course material. Um, right. What was going on there was appropriate for what we were discussing. Yep, I figured. I mean, yeah. knowing knowing the people who are running it, uh, yeah, they generally are not the type to. Yeah, I mean they they will, they will they, toss in some stuff just because it's really cool. Yeah, but generally not stuff that no one in the world will ever. Do. Yeah, and there is lots of time for hands-on practice, uh, and it like the class size. There's let's see, three, four. There's five people in this class. Damn. Right. That's, there's one, that. Two, that is. There's five people three instructors, three world-class instructors. Like, you can't... You cannot beat that ratio. Yeah. No, I mean... Uh, so my locksmith... Was... My locksmith certification class, which just wrapped um, about a month ago now, yeah. uh, had 13 students and one instructor. On the other hand, we apparently were an abnormally large class. Yeah. Um, I can see that being problematic if, if people are going in with no pre prior experience. I think that's why the teacher appreciated having me there. Yeah. yeah. Which is also part of why I should have uh, my license arriving in the mail in about a week and a half. 
Oh, congrats. And I spent most of the day cleaning off the giant pile of crap that had been occupying most of this table previously uh, to make room for my key cutting machine, which should be arriving tomorrow. Nice. Hey, have you seen the, the Pack-A-Punch machine? Yes. We were we were playing with it the other day, well, every day. Man, is that thing just awesome to have in the field. Oh, yeah. No, they are, they are very, very useful. The Really, the one drawback to the Pack-A-Punch and the Blue Punch and the similar yeah. products is that generally they uh, will only cut a single depth system. Yeah, um, it has swappable dies. Right. So the Pack-A-Punch has swappable dies. The Blue Punch costs a bit more, and mm -hmm. each one can only do one system. Right. Right. Um, and, and so it's a lot of money. Right. On the other hand, the the blue punch is meant more for if you are an in-house locksmith for a large facility where you're only cutting uh, keys for your system. You're only using one right. system. And really, at that point, you can get a cheaper machine to do it with. Well, the, the blue punch is sort of the budget way to go if all you need to do is originate that one system day in, day out, and you don't want to spend two, two, three, four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000 on a key machine that can do anything. Yeah. Um, for those who don't know what we're talking about, the Pack-A-Punch and its friends effectively are like the old Dymo key labelers or uh, uh, label machine makers with the impression tape where you would like dial in yeah. the letter and then squeeze really hard to get the letter on the tape and then move to the next position, dial, squeeze really hard. I actually it's one of those. It's, we all did. It's that, but for keys. Uh, yeah. this you put key in and then you move to the position, dial in the depth, squeeze really hard. And yep. then you Key and it's really cool and it's super fast, way yeah. faster for sure than using, you know, the, the old grinder or cutting wheel machine to like cut your depths, which is pretty fast. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah, do, do. Um, yeah. So that was neat. Uh, there's lots of cool stuff to play with here, but we're focusing on covert entry, so not so much picking uh, every lock out there. In fact, there was a I we only spent about half a day to maybe three quarters of a day in actual lock picking right uh, and then the, then it was a lot of a lot of bypass um today was electronic control bypass nice uh, training and practice they have a they have a bunch of doors in the warehouse built out oh nice it, uh wired up with various types of alarm systems and locking mechanisms and such um and like that's great like that's hands-on like it's stuff they could never bring to a con that's just right. stuff so unwieldy that they're like there's transporting this isn't worth it yeah uh, there's no way we would even like we would have the time to train people enough people to like really have everyone get a kick out of it so they just have it here and like right. today i was bypassing you know magnetic alarm systems and magnetic door locks and uh, very nice Oh, it's just so cool. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, here's, here's your here's your pack a punch. Oh yeah, there you go. Or, uh, four hundred seventy dollars, more or less. Yeah. And the blue punch, which is basically the same thing except slightly less portable, at a uh, thousand. And then you get in, and then the next closest thing that does more than just one dedicated system would be the uh, HPC uh, punch machine which is like 1700 um, yes and they have a larger version of one of those um, there and they said it was about two grand but I cannot remember the name right now but it looks very similar um, like a with a manual punch yeah. style thing no with a, its actual cutter wheel oh yeah then that's probably the blitz oh yeah so not that machine because it's a punch the blitz is exactly what it is yes. yeah that's actually what i have arriving oh cool i man i have been cranking away in that thing it's great you're gonna love it oh yeah no it's 
those those things list for um, uh, like twenty five hundred. Yeah, I got one. I got one used uh, at a much better price, um, and so between that and I just need to pick up a few more cutting wheels, and I actually have a couple of uh, clients that I'm looking to put in bids on jobs for them, uh, where that machine plus a new cutting wheel, and I can do their high security uh, lock systems. Nice. I mean, I can't imagine being a licensed lock, locksmith in New York that you would ever be hurting for work. <clears throat> it's Especially if you're willing to take the cheapo jobs. Right. Work. That's really, really, it's it's more about trying to figure out what kind of jobs do you not want to take. Right. Uh, in New York, because like there is always demand for lockout service. Right. On and the other hand, lockout service. You run into sketchy people. It's a great way to get most robbed. Of, most of your most lucrative jobs are going to be late at night, where you've got about a uh, like twenty five, seventy five uh, percent chance of uh, having someone trying to break in somewhere. Right. <laughs> they're trying to get you to break in for them. They're, they're either going to ro be robbing a building or robbing you. Right. So like, I, I feel like mugging someone, but I'm also very lazy. Right. I'm a 24-hour locksmith. Yeah. They have money. They usually have money, and if they don't, they've got expensive tools that I can sell easily. And they'll come right to where I'm at right now. Right. And then there's there's also just all sorts of uh, horror stories that I've I've heard going through all of this training and licensing stuff of uh, locksmiths uh, going to do a job and they're wrapping up and the customer literally just slams the door in their face without paying and legally the locksmith is now just shit out of luck well, like they just they just spent an hour installing all this hardware and a few hundred dollars in locks on this person's door, and now they're not getting paid. Why wouldn't you take money up front? Well, most yeah. people do, or they uh, get a deposit, or they say, okay, well, you have to give us a card before we'll start work. Yeah. There's lots of other things, but a lot of a lot of these are like horror stories from either back in the day when that sort of thing was a lot more difficult to do just because you couldn't easily take credit cards over the phone or process them in the field or you'd get people passing bad checks or mm -hmm. I mean really uh, taking a uh, Taking payment is a lot easier these days just because of how quickly you can verify uh, any sort of uh, payment that isn't just cash. Uh, yeah. I mean, hopefully that whole problem will go away in our lifetime. Or everything will come burning down and we all die. Right. Oh, no, that we won't die. That's the thing. Right? <laughs> that, like yeah. oh, capitalism is going to destroy the world, and like that means that we're all going to be dead soon. And it's like, no, it doesn't. Yeah, no. It, it means that all we're economies will the still be here, and that's the problem. Right. <laughs> it's going to be like Fight Club style. Like everyone's going back to zero. What now? Yeah. Hard here on the interstate. Yeah. No, I um. It's one of the things I, I've really uh, that has really changed my outlook uh, was uh, running uh, was meeting a bunch of people who uh, their primary field of study is um, the sociological effects of nuclear weapons and. 
<laughs> and it's like, yeah, so if there is a nuclear exchange, I want to be in the, in the I want to be in that first wave of people that get killed as soon, uh, by the bomb hitting. I don't want to even be in the in the like third zone where it's uh, non-fatal injuries. Yeah. Uh, I'm, well, then you I'm, have to then you have to survive, and that sucks. I'm excited for that. That's totally where I'd want to end up, man. Like, you know, taking over a mall and getting a, you know. I mean, that that appeals up until you you realize that you now have to figure out how to um, rebuild agriculture uh, from the ground up. Oh, I don't. I don't. It's a very selfish thing. Like, I don't anticipate living long enough for that to be my problem. Ah, okay. <laughs> as long I, as we're clear. You know, we have the American approach. Like, it's really, only somebody else's problem. Right. I'll be dead before that happens. Shrug emoji. Okay. So you're, you're one of the people that is planning on surviving the initial destruction of the bombs, but not living long enough to not uh, to have Actually, to... Give a fuck. Uh, to have to be concerned with uh, sustainable food sources. Right. I, I will be dead by the time killing other people for their food no, is no longer a viable option. Okay. I mean, really, that that's kind I'm of where... I'm right now. That's kind of where a lot of people are really going to die anyway. Right. I mean, just really, if you examine the whole premise of killing people to steal their food. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Right. <laughs> oh, shit, a lot of people are going to die from that. Well, yeah. And then someday, I'm going to die from that. Pretty much. Or I'm just going to get old and die relatively soon. So, like, the like... Mean, final. If you're eating mostly just non-perishable foods, it's not going to be very healthy. I don't... I'm not sure how, how old you're going to be able to make it. Well, I would of... not eat anything that grew in the vicinity yeah. of Chernobyl. Let's put it that way. Give, I'm just saying, given what the average life expectancy would be in such a situation... So old is a relative term. Right. Maybe I would agree with that. I mean, you know, you the go far... Would be the new middle age. You go far enough back in time and getting to 40 was you you were uh, the honored elder of the tribe. Well, and not so much far enough back as... Oh, yeah, you just... Certain points. Different countries, different countries in the world right now. Yeah. Where getting to... Uh, getting through puberty without dying uh, is considered an achievement. Right. And not a small like, one at that. In the Bible days... Oh no, they live to like, be like 900. Well, no. or they live to be about 30. Living to 60 was normal, and then living to 40 was abnormal. And like it, it, it fluctuates greatly. It's like the average human lifespan has not been gradually increasing since since our the beginning of our existence. It has fluctuated. Yeah. And, no, as as various civilizations have uh, yeah. arisen stabilized, built uh, systems of trade, which enabled uh, specialized agriculture and so yeah, on. Specialized healthcare, just knowledge right. of medicine, you know. All, all of these things all contribute to increasing lifespans, and then that particular civilization collapses, and suddenly life expectancy takes a nosedive, and then slowly people reestablish uh, a new uh, organized New civilization. society where they can once again achieve those things and you think that this would be the end of humanity and then there would be time for the earth to generate a new dominant species or do you think that this is just yet another civilization in the long line of civilization and another one will rise from the ashes of this one well, what I what I I'm using the term civilization uh, to mean, say, like ancient Rome was a civilization, yeah. and then or ancient Egypt, Mesopotamia, right. 
Mediterranean area. Right. Each of those is what I'm in this particular context referring to as a. Yeah, same like, here. Although, like, uh, those are civilizations that we at least have, like, general knowledge of and can speak to some, to what we think is authoritative, authoritatively. Right. What went on there, even though we discover new things all the time. You have things like, let's discuss if Atlantis really existed or not. If it did, sure. we have nothing to go on except hearsay. Like, could that have, was that, do we consider that a civilization that existed and just like failed so greatly that it literally wiped itself from the face of the earth? You know, it, we don't know how many civilizations. It depends how literally, it depends how literally you take uh, certain works of ancient Greek philosophy. Yeah. Given that that is basically the only actual thing that purports to be a record of Atlantis specifically. Or, well, at least uses the name Atlantis. Yes. Well, I mean, the whole legend of Atlantis basically comes from various interpretations of... Is it right. Plato's Republic, or was it... Yeah, and very oh. few philosophers. It was pretty much Plato. Yeah, yeah. It was just, it was just Plato's Republic in which he yeah. talked about that. Hmm. And yeah. then there's a the whole argument about is he talking about an actual place that existed, or is he talking about a theoretical society that he was using as a model to make some sort of yeah and the normal people would say probably the latter yeah and then every so often someone tries to come along and say oh but wait we have this uh we have these other records that yeah we found this uh, thing that doesn't make any sense and it's in the ocean so atlantis right um, or, I mean, oh, we, but now we've discovered ancient records of a tidal wave that hit certain areas of the Mediterranean around the time uh, that Plato was supposedly talking about. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. There's, I mean, we have all these sites globally that we have that are like sure. mysteriously complex and full of incredible feats of engineering for the time they were created that we have next to no information about. And so they off, they're overlooked and ignored just because they're not really talked about. It's not that it's a cover-up, it's just we still don't have any information and we yeah. don't have... Like, we're just yeah, so it's a really cool geometric pattern here, but we've got no clue. Right, how did the, how was this like massive monument created? We don't have the beginning of an idea. That's all I got. Yep. Over here, you can go look. I don't know. So it never gets talked about because there's no cool story to tell about it. Right. And uh, so we're those old civilizations that are just long gone sure, that like sure. itself up the earth. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, there's that, and then if you bring in up the whole thing about like a new dominant species, then you get into the whole theory about you know was it possible that there was some uh, earlier intelligent life uh, analogous to humans at some earlier time? Yeah. Did it There's even no come? actual evidence of it, but it's certainly an interesting concept to play around with and makes for good sci-fi. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It leads, it leads to aliens really fast. Right. Um, that's great. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean... It's interesting how fast it leads to aliens, which makes you wonder if there's any plausibility in, in <laughs> Because of all these, like, like every civilization and like society that has ever existed has ancient tales they tell of creation or back in the day or whatever where right the gods or the beings from the sky came down and taught us to do this and that like civilizations that had no contact with each other both have these similar stories and it's like okay if we're going to say there's not aliens what is it about the human animal that causes it to 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 spontaneously generate this same story all the time. Well, I'm guessing that, you know, one at least possible explanation is that a few hundred years from now, it'll turn out to just be a bunch of really dickish, trolly time travelers. That's fine. I'd accept that. I would expect, I would accept dickish, trolly aliens. I mean, that's all, I mean, well, Douglas Adams covered that. Although that's directly what the what a lot of the myths cover right <laughs> you, you have dickish trolley aliens and a lot of this are beings from the sky 
many yeah. cult- cultures have their prankster god. Um, yeah. The and then, uh, and then they end up just being the the set dressing for a really awkward uh, Star Trek episode. Yeah, and the other explanation is just like back in the day, all people had like was fucking as far as they could walk, and then the sky. Right. And nobody could get to the sky. And it, the sky looked nothing like anywhere they could walk to. And so it's real easy to make stories about, yeah, there's shit up there. And those people. Man, those people. They know some shit. And so, like, maybe that's just all it was. Sure. That, that's one universal connecting thing. All of these civilizations all had the night sky. The night sky and limited transportation. Like... Even today, there's no one who has looked up at the night sky from way out in the wilderness where there's no light, light uh, pollution and gone, holy fuck, what are we even doing here? Mostly it just gives me vertigo. Yeah. It, it does that, especially if you're laying on your back. Oh, no, that's what I have to lay on my back. All right. <laughs> no, it's if I... If... I, I used to, growing up, I, I spent a lot of time on top of uh, mountains in the northeastern United States. So you get very little light pollution, very, very clear night skies, very little cloud cover and everything else. And so you get, so you just like glance up at night while you're walking to the uh, latrine and all of a sudden your your entire sense of depth and uh, position goes all out of whack. Yes. Did we scare everyone off? Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. Gee. Oh, well. Seems that way. But we do. It's our thing. Did you? Did you? Is there no way to get that video working? Uh. Well. So what has happened is I've played it, and it will work when I post. So when I post it to YouTube, it will. The video will work with audio, and everything will be fine. But sharing yeah. it over Hangouts so that we can During all enjoy time, together well, is no longer... Doing... Really, I just wanted you guys to see it, so as long I mean, as you, you both watched it. I have it's... not. I have it sitting on my hard drive now, though. He's okay. he's waiting for, for when the, when well, the time I mean, if, comes. If Beaches had said, okay, does everyone have their copy of the video? Okay, we're all going to start it now. <laughs> Thanks for good podcast. Everyone's... Yeah. Well, I mean, while he was recording it on his machine we could have all watched it on ours reaction um, videos we cool. couldn't actually hear the video well now you can watch it later right might also be fun yeah um, i mean it'll end up in youtube eventually once we roll it out but the uh i don't i won't give away the plan it's, it's pretty fun though it's so far i'm intrigued and my interest is peaked i'm actually just kind of wondering if you made it a little bit less obviously scammy, you could even possibly use it as a social engineering pretext. Um, I I will say that the the person who who the producer and editor of it has two Emmys, <laughs> like, like, the, like the real like the real award, the Emmy. Actual Emmys, not made up Emmys. He has won two of them. Uh, he's a friend of a friend who, um, much in the same way, so I used to have a friend whose job it was to touch up wedding photos. Photos. He like worked for a wedding photographer, and so all day he would his job was to make brides skinnier because that was what they would request. They'd be like, "Ah, oh, can you make me look skinnier?" And he's buddy, and he was like, "That's not what you look like, though." Like, this is your wedding photo, and you want it to be a lie? Like, that's not what... And so every day, he would get mad, and to let off steam, he would take pictures of animals and make them fat. <laughs> and he was, he was great at it. He would just crank out fat animals all day and send them to us, and we would just <laughs> fucking dying, because he'd get this fat squirrel text message. And uh, so this guy, like, he likes to do fun garbage like this, 
to get away from like the grueling monotony of having to do like a Emmy award winning film work. But, you know, and he's got a there. studio and everything and all the equipment you'd need. And he knows how to do everything. And so like th the first draft of this commercial turned out so good that we spent more time making it look like shit than we did on actually <laughs> filming. Because it looked awesome and we're like, this, like, we, we, like, it was very, we knew up front, like, we want this to look like garbage, middle of the day, daytime TV lawyer commercial. Yep. Like, yeah, all right, we got it. And, like, we watched the first run and we're like, this looks amazing. What are we going to do? <laughs> and we spent, like, three hours. Um, no, we didn't spend three hours, probably, like, an hour and a half to two hours just crapping it up and uh because we we yeah, it was about three and a half hours total for starting with me putting on a suit and memorizing the lines to walking out of there with a finished video was three and a half hours that's that's, and that's how good he is yeah that's, that's yeah. pretty remarkable I mean, that's what happens when you hire an emmy award-winning producer yeah. um yeah and and so like in any anything we wanted to do he's like oh yeah i could do that and like even in the beginning there's an eagle that flies off that cage right he was like oh yeah like i can go get 3d animated eagles like there's like there's a, a clip art resource for 3d animated mm -hmm. object right. and you just yeah. drop them in your video like that the whole backdrop that's a thousand books that looks like they're really there that's all fake that bird cage that looks like it's real and extremely out of place, fake. <laughs> the only thing that was really there was me in that book. Did the book actually have the drawings in it? That yeah. Was... Okay. Yeah. Um, I we thought it'd be funny that that book was actually a storyboard book that he uses for just you know storyboarding, mm -hmm. and uh, so we just turned up to a blank page and I was like, you know, it'd be funny if this was just like full of bird pictures. <laughs> And uh, so one of the guys there is like, oh, I can draw a bird. And he draws this like really good bird. And I'm like, yeah, that's funny. That's good. It's like a bird. And then my friend Jack, who is like, no, it should be like a really shitty bird. <laughs> <laughs> and so then he turns the page and he draws like the shittiest, like left handed bird. <laughs> and then so he's like, make like we like we, the way I was standing was very specific and the way I hold the book so right. that we definitely make sure that if like you're watching there's a good half second clear frame of this shitty five year old's drawing of a bird in this book that is never referenced or like called attention to <laughs> or really explained in any way well it's explained if you watch the commercial it's that I'm right. a our, we have a law firm for birds and <laughs> right. so I'm a bird lawyer and right. so, like, uh, so it's there to me, oh, I didn't see you there. I'm studying up on my bird law. <laughs> uh, I just uh, put a link in there. There's a there's a guy named uh, Jason Meeks, and he's a uh, locksmith in um, Jackson, Mississippi. Would you say he's famous? Because that name sounds very familiar. Um. We both talked to him on Twitter a certain amount of time. Yeah, okay. Uh, Fondren Lock, SE Lock and Key. It's all him. Okay. I, I know I've seen his name come up, it's likely on Twitter, so that makes yeah. a lot of sense. Okay. Yeah. Um, so he has a YouTube channel. He's fairly prolific, but he did a series of videos of uh, what if a locksmith did, a, did commercials like X? So he did, uh, like local used car dealership, local personal injury attorney. It's, it's funny that those two are somehow different. Oh, I guess they are like personal mm -hmm. injury. Like what I, I mean, there's a certain car style. dealership is like style. I'll club a baby seal to make a right. better deal. Right. <laughs> right. You get the uh, clubbing baby seals, uh, used car salesman. Oh man, there was. The wanting to look really impressive and important and professional local lawyer. Uh, what? Then he had um, crappy infomercial and 
something else. I forget what it is, but that, that uh, link should get you the first video and the entire playlist, which... Uh, cool. I was actually going to ask. That's what I was going to ask for. Um, it was to just let you talk, and I got what I needed. Uh, yeah, that's a trick. It works every time. <laughs> There was some... Oh, man. Uh, I used to live near the Tri-Cities area of Tennessee, and there was there's some <laughs> Shrek-themed... Uh, talking about, like, shitty used car commercials, there was, like, one guy that has, like, a Shrek-themed <laughs> uh, used car... No. Like, yeah. probably, definitely all unlicensed. Yeah, Probably. And the only reason why is because he's like, he's a big guy that's bald and looks <laughs> supposedly like Shrek. That's the whole... Yeah. Uh, have you ever seen that uh, IRS training video that they did with a Star Trek theme? Which one? There's a... Oh, God, now I have to find it. Well, the IRS actually did a training film. Uh, it wasn't a training film. I thought it was a... Um... No, it was a training. It was a commercial. Didn't they have a commercial? Oh, it, it was, was like a training video. It was an internal training video. Oh man. Uh. <laughs> so for what? Actually, apparently, they did a couple of them because there's at least one that was done in like original series style and apparently there's another one that was done uh with like next generation outfits okay sure as one does yeah but um yeah no if you just search irs star trek training video um there's a few copies on youtube and then there's a whole ton of uh, news articles from CBS, the Washington Post, Christian Science Monitor, uh, and so on. Because apparently uh, that was the outrage of the moment uh, five <laughs> years ago that that the IRS spent money on a Star Trek themed thing. There we go. <laughs> what the hell was that? Computer. I think watching the... My computer was computering. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Didn't you recognize the computer noises? It kind of... Did anybody ever look at... Does anybody remember Nullsoft? I would I would expect so, but... It sounds familiar. Yeah. What, what was the uh, The first thing that they came out with was Winamp. Oh. Yeah. Like the yes. original... Right. Nullsoft. Uh, and then they had one... They had one application that all it did was add beeps to your computer. Yeah. It was great. It was like a, it's just called a Windows theme. No, yeah, it was. Um, this was this was before you could do Windows themes. Oh, okay. This was way back in the day. Way back in the day, I didn't have the hard drive space for such frivolities. <laughs> I had five hundred megs, and I had to definitely. Yeah. Work with that. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. You oh. had that, or you had Command and Conquer. Apparently it was just no soft beep. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I have no recollection of that whatsoever. Oh, man. At random times. Yeah. It was and then later, uh, Microsoft introduced uh, Windows interface themes where you could do custom event sounds and so on. And people yeah. just started coming out with packs of generically... I mean, the themes for... Hollywood can, computer sounds. I uh, define custom sounds. I thought all the way back, at least in Windows ninety eight. If you just wanted to customize the, the sounds, pretty sure. I know you could do it in two thousand and XP. I wasn't sure about uh, the nine X branch. I'm pretty sure I remember on in ninety eight SE doing hmm. that. Yeah, I uh, yeah. 
I when I had a window a machine running Windows ninety eight, it uh, never lived long enough to make it worthwhile to do any real interface customization. Mm. I just never bothered. Well, yeah, I mean, it was one back then. It was a huge pain in the ass to do it, and two. Uh, Oh, yeah, because, like, window blinds and stuff never came out until, like, Windows XP. Right. Right, and the other thing was, back then, like, you had so few sources for digital audio. Yeah. Um, that, like, you actually had to go and spend the time uh, to actually create these sound effects from scratch. Because otherwise, like, your only option was your, like, five MP3s that you had uh, downloaded off of. Right. Uh, 98. Um, what was the thing? PC++. Napster. Napster. No, Napster was post-98. Was it? Like, well, that would have probably still been, like, the Windows ME windows 2000 era so i think a lot of people yeah probably were still on windows 98 yeah, so, yeah. okay yeah because windows 2000 uh was like the last of the um windows oh. 2000 was the first one where they did like a personal uh like a home version of a perf of a enterprise windows and then XP was when they just merged it all into one big pile. Yep. Was it? No, Windows Windows 2000 was the one where Windows they had... Windows 2000 was the first mm -hmm. one where they tried to do it, but... You they, still had ME. That was off the old branch. And 98SE. Yeah. Remember 98 Second Edition? Uh, that was the first operating system that I had on my own personal computer because I was That was spoiled. the first operating system of the Windows 98s that worked. Yes. <laughs> but the first, the first I, computer I, I, that I had I was... I unfortunately was stuck with Windows 98 Build 2000, which had the annoying habit of uh, shitting itself uh, fatally every six months and that was back at the time where your recovery option was to just do a clean install of Windows and lose all your shit <laughs> I remember one of the big things with Windows 98 I say it was it, it fixed the shutdown problem <laughs> right? and the shutdown problem <laughs> was that it didn't right and that was, and the fix was, oh, you need this other operating system. <laughs> yeah. That was the fix for, like, the shutdown button doesn't work. Yeah. Well, I mean, Windows 95 only sort of theoretically had a shutdown button anyway. Oh, right, because it just dumped you back to the DOS prompt. Well, no, it, it so didn't it actually make it power off. It didn't. What it would do is it would dump you back to a screen that would say, you can now safely turn off your computer. Oh, yeah, and it would just yeah. sit there. Right, it would just sit there saying, okay, yeah. now you can flip the physical switch. Because yeah. That was, back be that was back when you still had, like, the... It was the before ECPI. Right. Yeah. And you didn't have, like, the, the multifunction buttons. You had an actual switch right you had a toggle that disconnected the power the ac to the right. power supply right or or i mean uh yeah and then 98 was when they started coming out with computers where it was now like a push button except it was the kind that would lock in right and it would jumper two pins on the board right Right, but it was still it was still basically an actual physical switch. It was right. a uh, slightly different form factor. Yeah, I remember those those the AC toggles because like oh it, yeah, yeah. There was a, it was just a switch that ran from the power supply box to the front of the computer. Right, and definitely had AC flowing through it. Yep. 
Yeah, no, that was back when I was running. Uh, back when I had a machine that was built like that, I was running. What was it? Um, DOS six with Windows three point oh, and then Windows ninety five, and that was the computer that my brother managed to set on fire. Oh my god! <laughs> it literally it's hard to set a computer on fire. Like not much in it is flammable. It well. <laughs> Maybe this, like this was, this was back when I mean back when everything was fine. were still expensive enough that you didn't throw them away until literally all of the magic smoke had gone out, and so it had How been clogged with dust. Was it extremely? <laughs> so it had been my father's computer, which then became my computer, and then became my brother's computer, and. Um, one night we're sitting, we're all sitting in the living room watching TV, and then all of a sudden it's like, does does anyone smell smoke? And we turn around and there's this cloud of smoke coming out from under his desk. Weird. Well, it was because the power supply finally got so choked with dust. Ah, uh, yep. Yeah. And all the fans had died without us realizing so it just overheated and all the dust caught fire yeah that'll happen yeah and what's funny about that is once you clear it out it probably still works well it, it did enough that we would have had to replace at least one or two components if only because of the amount of wire insulation that had melted off yeah. And, you know, when it's uh, when it's the DC lines crisscrossing with the AC lines in the in the power yeah. supply. Yeah, that'll that'll take care of some things for me. <laughs> yeah. Um Sorry, I'm filling out onboarding docs for consultancy. Do uh, that I didn't even want to work for. Then why hey. are you filling it out? At uh, least they have onboarding docs. Doing a friend a favor. That's always the way. It's you know, it's one of those things where they like they offered me enough money that I had to take it, kind <laughs> of thing. Okay. Wait, so are you freelancing now, or I thought you were doing no, some? I'm not. I know. I just this got offered to me like, hey man, can you do this? We're in a bind, and I was like, for X dollars, and they're like, okay. And then I said, well, you are in fact, exactly that desperate. Okay. I don't have the time for it, but I have inadvertently agreed to to our <laughs> to these terms. That's the problem with not making your obscene prices obscene enough. Yeah, yeah, always take what you think is obscene and then just like and add a zero, double it. Yeah, and then I was like, I don't have an LLC. Like, you'd have to, you'd have to onboard me as a ten ninety nine. He's like, Yeah, that's what I do. That's fine. Son of a bitch. <laughs> like, I'm trying to get out of this, man. Why are you so prepared for this? Because <laughs> they run a consultancy. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, I'm work I'm a, re I'm a full time researcher now. Like. For a single company, fancy. Like that. Yeah, I go to work every day. Ugh. Welcome to the club. Weird. Um, yeah. I don't remember what I was going to say now. So, I have a question. Oh, do you remember? The guy on the hard OCP forums who filled his computer with water. <laughs> it was like, it was one of like the first gargantuan internet, is this a troll or not threads. Like, like that was one of the first times like troves of non forum members were going to a forum thread to look at it from the internet. 
and it was, it was in the the water cooling. Uh, oh god, that thing! Yeah, and he had sealed his computer up, filled it like opened the optical drive and stuck a hose in it and filled it up with water. Right. Oh my and he posted god. pictures of everything. And he was fucking livid. And he posted this long ass story about how he did all this. And he was going to like impress his family on Thanksgiving because his whole family was coming over. And he was going to power it up to show him his new awesome water cooled PC. And, and like, <laughs> he referenced like specific threads where he misconstrued specific pieces of information and like everything checked out. And then, like he people called him out like haha cool story bro this is really funny and then he would respond and he kept responding for weeks and fighting people and being livid and threatening to sue like well beyond what somebody who was playing a joke would invest an amount of time in and and so the whole internet was like this guy may really be serious he may have filled his computer with water and turned it on <laughs> <laughs> and we never knew <laughs> and we never will I want to say that was around Y2K somewhere between then and like 05 that sounds like about the right time hmm. so do we want to take a hot second and maybe talk about Digicert's uh, beautiful wondrous oh, statement yes. that they were I was thinking that was going to be the first thing I was going to bring up today, and then I just didn't want to ruin the flow by, <laughs> by doing that. We were talking about it before. Uh, oh, it's so funny. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, and it reminded me of a thing my dad did once. Okay. Oh, man. First, let's... Uh, so, like, what kinds of... Go ahead. We should probably just read the press release so that everybody kind of knows yeah. what we're talking yeah. about. Yeah, all right, go ahead and do that. Okay. Uh, where the hell did it go? How do I have this many fucking windows open? Uh, <clears throat> you must work in IT. Just get it from uh, there. Yes, that would actually... <clears throat> Today, DigiCert issued the following statement regarding Trust Echo Certificate Revocation. Trust Echo requested revocation of their semantic GeoTrust thought and rapid SSL certificates claiming the certificates were compromised. When we asked for proof of the compromise, Trustco did not provide details on why they were requesting the immediate revocation. Trustico's CEO indicated that Trustico held the private keys for those certificates and then emailed us approx thousand. approximately 20,000 certificate private keys. Uh, when he sent us those keys, his action gave us no choice but to act in accordance with the CA browser forum baseline requirements, which mandate that we revoke a compromised certificate within 24 hours. As a certificate authority, we had no choice but to follow the baseline requirements. Following our standard revocation process, we gave notice via email to each certificate holder whose private keys had been exposed to us by Trustico so that they could have time to get a replacement certificate. <laughs> In communications today, Trustico has suggested that this revocation is due to the upcoming Google Chrome distrust of semantic roots. That is incorrect. We want to make it clear that the certificates needed to be revoked because Trustico sent us the private keys. This has yeah. nothing to do with future potential distrust dates. Yeah. Do you know why they sent those private keys? Like, is that I guess a, we just go over the Yeah. So what happened there was Trustico. Uh, Trustico was in in cahoots with uh, Symantec, who was. Um, rolling everything over to Digicert because Symantec is getting out of the cert biz. Trustico had gotten an offer from Komodo with a lucrative deal saying like, hey, since that's all happening, if you come over to us, we'll give you a better deal. Uh, and so Trustico was like, sounds, sounds great, but we'd have to revoke all the certificates we've issued out there. Let's go ask Symantec to do that. And Symantec was like, no, you can't just like arbitrarily revoke a fuck ton of certificates 
or also one, unless you're either the owner of those certificates or two, those certificates have been compromised. And the only form of compromise for a certificate is, is a leak of the public key. Oh, the private, private key. Private key. Or private key. Yeah. Yeah, the public key. wouldn't work too well. <laughs> ocean of public keys. Um, Look at all these public keys. What are we going to do? Get you some right now. There's one in my browser here. Get you uh, some. So, oh no, our public key is leaked for this hangout. How um, are we going to do this? And so, yeah, and so, so Semantic was like, no, like, the only way we revoke those is if the the private keys were were leaked and then and then did it, uh trustico was like oh got it <laughs> my god this is this is even mm. yeah got it the fact that they so the head of trustico. A press release claiming that this was because Hang on. Of... It's, it's better oh no how can it so, be better trustico. than this Part of the way Trustico issued certs is you had to randomly generate the, your private key on their end. Right. Through the private key generator. Fucked up to begin with. Yeah, that, that's that's weird. So, but that's that's how it worked. What they were also doing because of that was storing those private keys. <laughs> they kept them. Yep. And so when Symantec was like, no, unless those private keys leak, we're not revoking them, the head of Trustico was like, got it. And got then it. directly emailed all of everybody's private key <laughs> to Symantec. <laughs> then, here, does this constitute, <laughs> does this constitute a leak? <laughs> Oh no! Oh. I hope someone has audio <laughs> from from the semantic offices. Oh. The, the shrieks of terror. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. And then, and then, uh, um, and then they tried to be like. Oh yeah, so Semantic revoked all of your certificates because of uh, a compromise. Uh, in private key. Google Chrome. And then, yeah, and then Semantic was like, "You emailed us the keys," <laughs> <laughs> and this was all done publicly. Like this was all done in open letters to between the corporations that are all online. <laughs> like this was be- done very publicly, <laughs> face. This is like, oh, employees of both corporations have been interviewed. This is like the PR, poor PR people at both companies. Oh, my God. Like, was trying to throw Semantic under the bus because uh, that was part of the whole game to, like, get rid of Semantic. And Semantic was like, the head of Trustico emailed us all of your private keys. Yeah, this shit ain't on us. Yeah, intentionally. Uh um, yeah, so that's what happened there. Well, I guess, um, what are those idiots, uh, I Am Enlightened, uh, finally has, has a replacement. What? What? Uh, Wait. hold on. I forgot the name of it. That stupid, uh, Boston InfoSec company. Oh, I am the not I am the Calvary. In Boston? Yeah. Um so anyway, I mean the moral there is don't use a browser based public key generator or private key generator for your fucking certs or anything. Sigilant. Sigilance? Sigil what? Sigilant. Not a word. It's it's the They're name. They're running out of words to name things, so they have to just start making crap up. <clears throat> Somebody, they probably paid a linguist for that word. Yeah. They were like, make us a word that sounds like security and vigilance, but is none of those. And they're like, sigilant. It sounds like vigilant and cyber. Cyber vigilant, sigilant. Uh, yeah, so. And then everyone killed themselves. 
<sighs> Every time somebody says cyber, I cringe on the inside. I wish. Um. So that reminded me of a thing my dad did. Ah, yeah. You you said that a while ago. Tell us. Tell us about the thing that you're doing. When dad I was did. a kid, we lived in a suburb of Chicago. And one summer, we had a squirrel problem. Okay. All right. With you so far. We were overrun with squirrels. And, like, there was not enough food for the squirrels, so they started eating things that weren't food, like your lawn furniture. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I don't know how the squirrel population gets that out of control. Like, generally, like, food source, like, food availability. Uh, yeah, it should. Limits. So we were on the... I guess the beginning end of the natural limitation of their population. And uh, they were like chewing up all our shit. And so my dad calls the village and he says, Hey, there's, we got a, there's a ton of squirrels here and they're eating all our stuff. Can you come take care of them? And the village says, we don't, uh, we're not, we don't, that's not a service the village provides. We can't, we don't, we're not, we don't have the capabilities of dealing with like a squirrel infestation. And, and he's like, well, what do you mean? Like, you trap possums and stuff, and they're like, yeah, if you have, like, one possum, like, we can trap a possum and get rid of it for you, but, like, we don't, like, the the only, like, mass squirrel removal we do is, like, roadkill. Yeah. Like, we, we can't, like, we can take care of dead squirrels, we can't take care of live ones. And he's like, okay. Got it. <laughs> Oh, God. Hangs up the phone <laughs> and he goes to the closet and he gets his BB rifle out. <laughs> BB rifle. He goes to the front window and he spends the afternoon killing squirrels. <laughs> and now this is the summer of Chicago. This is the Ozarks. This isn't Georgia. <laughs> this is effective. Like I can see the Sears Tower from my porch. Like this is effectively the city. And here's my dad sitting in the window, taking pot shots at squirrels with his BB rifle. <laughs> and he kills a good 20 some of them. <laughs> and then he goes outside uh, with and he, and, he, and he kicks them all into the street. And he lost Night Owl. <laughs> uh, no, I accidentally <laughs> bunch of stuff under my desk and so he kicks them all into the street and he calls up the village and this is mind you this is same day and he calls the same woman because <laughs> it's like it's just she's working the desk that day and he goes i've got about 25 dead squirrels in my road please <laughs> come pick them up <laughs> oh wait no and he did say he did say, hey, I'm the guy who called earlier about the squirrels. <laughs> so, like, that was not overlooked. Did you know that was clear? <laughs> yeah. So now I've got about 25 dead ones in my road. Can you guys come? <laughs> and you know what happened? They okay, came up. Them up. <laughs> and that... That is how I turned out like this. <laughs> I was raised in that household. <laughs> and that's, uh, that I have a, I have a, too much. I have a very small set of stories about my dad that I have reserved, like for his eulogy, which is a morbid sentence. But it's like when I got when I got to like give a eulogy to tell people like who my dad was. That's going in the bucket. <laughs> that is very a very good example of who my dad was as a as a person. <laughs> He'll kill some squirrels to fuck with some. <laughs> oh no. Oh no what? I just realized that the shelf that I keep all of my copies of 2600 on um, is it sagging? Do you have too many uh, copies of 2600? Well, it's it's that old um, IKEA thing with the square 
gel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, they, don't, they don't really sag. What they do is they run out of room. Yes. And so I just realized I've got a copy sitting on my desk here. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, Why is this still sitting here? And I look up, oh, right. Because that entire shelf is entirely full. Yep. That sounds about right. That thing is, I think I'm still missing about five issues. Hmm. I need to catch up. I'm, I'm pretty negligent in my reading 2600 in a timely manner. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, I am <laughs> way behind on actually reading them. Like, I, I don't think I've really read the last three issues cover to cover. Mm. But, um... I remember in this last one, um, there was somebody that was, like, looking in their router to see... They're like, oh, what are all these weird URLs and stuff? And, like, the ones that they explicitly mention, like, I get what they were, like... I don't know. I felt like they were being maybe a little overly paranoid. Uh, because, like, some of the ones that they listed were just, oh, oh, that's like a CDN for Facebook. Do you not use Facebook? Like, oh, that's for Twitter. What do you, like, chill, man. <laughs> like, I mean, I, I mean, I some, of the, some of those CDNs are really kind of. They have weird, shitty names, and they should yeah. maybe consider not having weird, shitty names, but. Or just do something to make it clear that they are a CDN being used by a third party. Uh, They should use like a subdomain or something. Like if it's the Twitter CDN, it should be like twimg.twitter.com as opposed to like whatever the fuck it actually is. Or like uh, I think the the Facebook CDN is like fbcdn.com like they just like yeah, it's it's a couple of extra characters. We're not hurting on bandwidth right now. Just (laughs) like and I, I actually, for, a while, for a while, I was actually trying to keep track of all of the different CDNs, mostly because I was trying to block them at the gateway. Mm. Like, I, I actually intentionally was trying to make it so that uh, all of those Facebook ads and beacons and everything just could never load to begin with, so I didn't have to keep dealing with them taking up half of the list of blocked scripts. Yeah. Uh, my, uh, uh, browser based, uh, script blocking and, and editing tools. And then it turns out that my spouse uses Facebook and and I had to stop doing that. Yeah. Which is annoying. Such is life. I mean, it's not like I'm on an. It's not like I'm on a metered connection, at least. But yeah. Uh, it's still when like half of the blocked scripts are just Facebook, and I don't use Facebook. I don't look true. at Facebook. It's a. It's a. It's a cornerstone, it's a pillar of the internet now, in that it's ingrained into so much of the internet. Yeah, because I mean, there are so many yeah. places that use it as a single sign-on. Uh, that. I mean, I'm talking like even if you do not have an, you know, a Facebook account, like you have no means of actually interacting with any of their services, loading a web page almost always makes calls to Facebook CDN. Yep. yep. And Twitter. And thank God Google Plus is dying. Yeah. Well, I mean, that doesn't really stop all the calls to Google servers, but... That's that's not really related to Google Plus. That's... Right. right. That's, that's, just, that's that how Google thing. gets its bread and butter. Right. It tracks where you go so that it knows what ads to give you. Yeah. It's your Google rent. Hey, what do you guys think on the like the definite but maybe not definite conspiracy theory that that your devices are listening and transmitting your conversations to more effectively serve you better advertising? 
That depends on the device. Because. Uh, uh, so Snubs was talking about that uh, for the Facebook oh. app. She said that there's some setting or something. Um, I don't use that, but. Yeah, I don't use the Facebook yeah, app either. That's, that's the thing, but there have been a bunch of uh, things that have either very strongly indicated that at least some, uh, what was it? It wasn't Facebook or any of the big well-known ones, but somewhere in Europe, there was a thing where some uh, advertising app uh, was just listening with an open microphone all the time. And then there's that, what was it? Then there was another one. There was some app that was listening for, uh, Oh, the thing snubs was talking about was not this. Mm, right. Okay. I mean, there, there are, there are things along those that could fit that very general question. Like, this, you know, the, you know, the old thing happens where you were talking to somebody about a thing that you have never Googled for or thought of before or talked about. And then you go home and later that day you're getting ads for it. Right. Like, okay, well, that's weird. Um, and the plausible explanation I was given for that a long time ago was that um, you were likely talking to a person that you talk to, that you either talk to all the time on the internet as well via a social media site. Let's say, let's call it Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, or you checked into the same location as another person. Or it, anyway, somehow Facebook connected the two of you as having a high likelihood of having conversed. Yeah. And or, I mean, particularly, and have the same particularly if we're talking about Facebook. Yeah. And then that other person went home and Googled the thing. Right. Now, because you're, you're linked, you will also get ads as like a potential secondary target. Right. But and I, that's, have... that's plausible for certain ad networks and certain websites. Yeah. It would be another thing if say, uh, that sort of thing started happening on a device that is not linked to any any sort of identity if like I'm just if I walk up to a, a, a one of those uh, link NYC kiosks on the street and suddenly I'm getting ads for something that would be and which is I was reading a thing on that about the the, the, the new. York. Oh yeah, no, those things are sketchy as fuck too. But and I was like, well, I, I can't imagine why they would not be listening. Like, of course they are. Like, it's almost uh, irresponsible for them to not be monitored, given what they are. Yeah, you know, I get it, and it's not, and and I'm okay with it because you're not being forced to use them. Well. On the other hand, you're also not being given a choice to not be, uh, to not uh, be dropped on by them. Oh, the, you mean the ads? No, I mean the, the Link NYC kiosks, where it's one thing if they're monitoring uh, uh, what people are doing on the tablets that they provide well you can or, disable your radios and almost people don't do that well yeah. i disable most of them most of the time on the other hand it would be really really inconvenient if in order to not have the link nyc kiosks spying on me i had to literally pull the the battery out of my phone the moment i stopped making a phone call well you just need to get one of those bags that blocks rf <laughs> Yeah, uh, that doesn't work. These uh, that doesn't work either now. Really? Not at all. Yeah, no. Uh, because someone came up with a way to do uh, ultrasonic data exfiltration. Through... Uh, yeah. Okay. Sure. 
Are we actually concerned that we're actually seeing that in the wild, especially in yeah. some places where... Let me, you do that effectively, and I'll believe you. I believe that's it's a oh, no, Do it effectively in New York City on the street. Yeah. Because there was like, I mean, come that's on. one of those things like that last guy who was like, oh, your scanner is leaking data. Like, I can get it to blink the contents right. of your hard drive. And I'm like, that you can't even measure that in a baud rate. Like, good luck, idiot. It's... Yeah, no, there's, there's. I, I, I mean, there is, however, the whole ultrasonic beacons in advertisements, which is what I was starting to refer to before, where advertisements on television or certain billboards and advertising hoardings now are integrating ultrasonic beacons uh, that certain apps uh, can listen for on your mobile device. So that they'll know that you're watching a particular commercial or even oh right yes actually yeah. a, a particular television program uh, okay that yeah. sort of thing that's actually that's not new either right yeah, no that's, that's, what, that's, that's, what, that's, I was, that's what I was talking about before I mean just Electric. the fact that yeah. oh uh, you know now in theory someone could uh, put a piece of software on my phone that could mimic the behavior of one of those ultrasonic beacons and have, say, the Link NYC kiosk be listening for those beacons it is much more technically plausible yeah. than, like, actually exfiltrating the, the contents of my memory card. Um, Thank you for showing us your... Uh, your... And there, you see that? Yeah. Yep. I think we've discussed this before. Did we? Yeah. yeah, we did. But we can talk about it more if you want. Oh, yeah. No, I, I think it's perfectly apt for the conversation. And then there's even some... Uh, also, I don't, Johnny, if you actually were talking while you were doing that. No, it's... Uh, for the podcast, it's fine. I clicked on his, on his okay. photo. So... Um, uh. But for for back to the original thing, um, I think that you would probably notice if you were to um, if somebody was like listening to you all of the time um, and then transmitting that to some server. Uh, I mean, I feel like you would probably notice that uh, you know it's either going to be sending that as data or be doing something else really weird. Right, and that was and, the thing. It's like if it's 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 going to kill your battery if it's listening full time. Yeah, or is it? Because so, like I have an iPhone 10, and mm -hmm. call like if all I'm doing is making a phone call on this, I can get 10 hours out of it with an active phone call. Did you can do a 10 hour straight active phone call? Really? On a full battery. Holy shit! That's yeah. actually impressive. That is it's ridiculously incredible. impressive. It's amazing. It's a fucking thousand dollar phone though. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. Um, the, so like, that's, but, but my battery does not, because, you know, because it's that good, I rarely get below 50% in a full day. Mm -hmm. So that's probably not happening. Um, yeah, no, it, it, and then it's like, you would see that on your data, but maybe it just stores it locally and then uploads it all once it's on Wi-Fi. That maybe you could even, but then you'd have hard drive space, and people would just run out of, like the cheapest, shittiest piece of shit phones that you have are only going to have like sixteen or thirty-two GB. Right, and before. it may it may just limit it to fifteen percent of the drive space. You know that you know it's a limit, um, and then but like if that was happening, somebody would have found that. Yeah, so yeah. That connection go away. Why does my phone upload? a gig of data every time I connect to Wi-Fi. Right. And maybe now, it's not... The thing be, though, that maybe, you know, phones are, are not the only device that has microphones in it these days. Sure. But then oh. how do you cross-reference, like... What else do you have when you're sitting in a restaurant that is able to personally identify you and all of your, you know... Your, your okay, now, I mean... I was just thinking about like Alexa and Google Home and 
Oh, right. I'm talking uh, conversations things. you had with a friend over lunch in a deli. Okay. You know, and then you go home and you're immediately, you oh, you po open a browser, you do a Google search, and you're getting ads for the thing you talked about at lunch, which is not at all related to what you're even searching for currently. Right. That sort of stuff. That's... It's probably confirmation bias and the... A bit you of know, that, say like it, frequency illusion, where where pretty much you don't think about it unless you're like, oh hey, I was actually discussing about that new restaurant. Why am I getting ads? It's, it's just looking that oh, you have an IP address that says you're in Chicago and did you go to that restaurant because you saw it, you didn't you never look at ads, but subconsciously you picked up ads for that restaurant that existed prior to you visiting. Yeah, so you don't notice it until you're like, oh hey, like somebody well, mentioned this fresh new hot restaurant. And uh, now I'm getting more, ads for it on Google. But even then, I would like I wouldn't know. I wouldn't think it was odd. I, you know, I wouldn't think it was that odd, and I would write it off as like, yeah, confirmation bias, or you know. I mean, but, one thing. One thing that I have noticed though. <laughs> one thing that I have noticed though is that um, very occasionally, depending on how many things I have remembered to turn off on my phone when I leave the house when I go to my local grocery store, if I look at my phone uh, afterwards, I will sometimes get uh, prompts from Google Maps saying like, hey, do you have any photos of this store that you're in? Or, uh, you know, why don't you review this store? Or how did you enjoy your visit? Yeah, but like the way that it does that is, uh, so if you have like your GPS on, or it actually even they factor in certain Wi-Fi footprints. So it right. says yeah, if I have GPS on and I'm kind of here, and then these Wi-Fi networks have these. Strengths, mostly it happens then... when I'm in enough of a hurry that I just stick my phone in my pocket and I forget to turn off the Wi-Fi radio. But it has occasionally happened where I have the Wi-Fi turned off, um, but I take a photo near uh, a commercial uh, yes. establishment. Yeah. I have noticed that Google Photos will fudge or fake location yeah. data when you don't... Like, I have GPS turned off pretty much... If any day that I go to work in most weekends, unless I'm going someplace, like, on a vacation, I have GPS turned off. Um, yeah. And then it'll be interesting because Google has figured out where I live and now knows what the interior of my house looks like. Uh, <laughs> But it will get faked out because if I take I photos at my house and then I go to my parents' house and take photos there, it has no fucking idea. So it will misclassify things that photos that I take at my parents' house as being taken at my house. Right. Well, at least in it, it goes but down to the town this, level, it doesn't have like an exact this, address or something. This is me just like wandering around, walking around in Manhattan. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, hey, there's a cool old phone booth that hasn't been torn down yet. Or. Hey, here's a funny deface street sign, or some graffiti. So, does do your photos get loaded to Google Photos? Nope. Are you sure? Yep. Okay. Because it constantly prompts me to log in. Ah, okay. That. okay. And I have not uh, associated any of my accounts with it, so it just keeps saying, "Please, will you log in so we can upload your photos to this thing?" Hmm. And I keep saying no. And I have uh, geotagging turned off in the camera. Yeah. I have uh, location, uh, the location services on my phone set to the absolute minimum that will allow the phone to continue functioning. Yeah. Because you can never... You can't, turn like, 100% off because then E99... Without, 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 like, ripping out the cellular radio. Yeah. <clears throat> And it will still like just try to guess at some business that I might be near. Hmm. On the other hand, New York City also has uh, an unusually dense mobile phone network, so it's much easier to Target. get uh, yeah. fairly accurate locations using just the cellular network, particularly with 4G, which uh, tends to require a, a much denser uh, tower build out in urban areas. See that with like LTE and 4G. 
Yeah, with with LTE. It's just too expensive still. And the... I mean, out, uh, in a lot of places, certainly, yeah. New York City, though, they um, have pushed pretty extensively on rolling out LTE base stations. I mean, like interception. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Inter interception, yes. On the other hand, when, since your phone, since uh, a lot of phones don't allow you to completely disable location services based on the cellular network yeah. because that is required in order for uh enhanced 911 it's part of the spec right it's part of the it's part of the spec it's required by law etc yeah. um and a lot of applications can still grab that data usually it's considered to be uh fairly low accuracy but uh, in some areas, I guess they have figured out that, well, if you're in New York, then, or somewhere else where there are uh, so many base stations that you're picking up and uh, that the E911 service is giving it a high confidence level. Right. Yes, that. Yeah. <laughs> Can't do anything about that. Yeah. Get off the grid, man. Well. I would, is easy. They, just don't have finally, a cell phone. I would, except they finally killed off all of the AMPS networks. What? Uh, all right, well, I have to go. Um, yeah, what time is it? It's, uh... it's 840 here. I'm in mountain time. Oh, yeah, that's right. I, uh, I have to get dinner because I'm starving. You, and... should, you should do that, Johnny. Yeah, and then I got to be up. The class is at eight every day, and it oh. ends at like six thirty. Holy so shit, that's a long ass day. It is a long day. It is awesome. I mean, there it's so dense with information, and then hands on time and one on one. Stuff. Like they, it's it's very well done, but it's a fifty plus hour week. Yeah, actually, I did have one quick question before you go. Are you doing? This out of your own pocket? Is did your company employer no, send this, you? Uh, this is my company. My company's paying for it. Um, we'll say it's like, it's thousands less than the cost of a Sans course, so that's cool. I'm yeah, learning more than I ever have in any Sans course. Um, Sans has really been going downhill. I used to like them a lot, um, and like I mean, they're still one of the best. It's just they're up to some some money making stuff that I don't agree with. Um, it's, uh, you know, companies paying for it and it's related to the fact that I, part of my primary role is infiltration of industrial sites. Mm. And so this is, this is huge on the list. And I was like, Hey, these world-class SMEs host training for exactly this. Can I go? And they're like, yes. Oh yeah, man, it's grueling. <laughs> it's, it is, a, it is a class. It is learning. It is taking notes. It is thinking very hard, and it is lots of practice. But it's really awesome. Nice. It sounds like it. Yeah. So Red Team Alliance, like I, I've been linking to them and stuff just to promote them. It's it's deviant. Like everyone knows deviant. Oh yeah. I mean, just from hope. Yep. And and then uh, uh, Bobic and Drew. I think a lot of people know Bobic. Uh, he specializes more in electronic access control bypasses and exploits. Uh, Anyway, they're all awesome. They're just world class in this industry and have been doing it forever. And so they were like, "Why don't we combine all of our trainings and really and do small class sizes and charge more because we're doing small class sizes and see how it works?" And so this is their first offering ever. Uh, so they're doing it. Um, it's kind of like a beta test. And so this one was more or less it was invite only because they wanted to get the get people in the first class that would. Like who, whose personalities they already knew, and that they would know we would give them with useful feedback, um, and be candid about it, and really sit down and talk with them as friends, uh, not just like give some garbage two sentence you know Google Doc 
review that they can't do anything with. And so a lot of it has also been that. And there's a lot of questions like, how was today? What did you think of this? Do you think we should do more of this? Or do you think we should do more of that? And like, there's a lot of candid conversations about like, this sucked or we didn't really need this. Um, wait, and there's, they're still building things. They're building a lot of things on the fly as conversations come up, which is cool in its own right. Um, so by they're hoping by the next one, like they're going to have a really solid offering squared away and then they'll like publicly offer that to people. So it's cool to be like a part of like the initial offering. I'm excited about that too. And it's cool to like help them build something really cool, but it's already really cool. Cause most of it is like trainings they've already done, um, you know, at DEF CON or Black Hat, but it's like, you take the like two day training they have. That's like, you know, two eight hour days and, uh, and they expand it out to like five, you know, 50 hours. And it's awesome. Highly recommend it. <laughs> it's cool to like, like, and nothing's been introduced to me that I didn't know existed already or didn't understand the, the gist of how it worked. It's cool. Like, so they'll tell you that and I'll be like, yeah, I get it. I knew that. I've seen that before. And then you'll get two layers further beyond that of like extremely technical details. And then you get history when this was first invented, what the context was, why it works, why people don't do something better. Like you just get so much context around everything that you can use in the field to make educated guesses about what the security is like on the other side of this door based, you know, what, what security devices are on the other side of this door based on what I see on this side, things like that, or things what it, based on what I've seen elsewhere in this building what do I think this company would have done at behind this door that houses something different. It's just really cool stuff like that. It really is about the, the attack and infiltration of uh, a commercial building, not just like, here's some types of attacks. Hope you find things out there to use them on. It's, it's very targeted and I would recommend it. If, it, you know, it's clearly it's not. I think it was like thirty nine hundred bucks. It's not something you would spend out of pocket, uh, unless you were going to recoup that cost in your own uh, work line of work. But if it's something you can justify your company as to have sending you to, it's awesome. <laughs> so if you have a role where you're responsible for the physical security of your building, uh, for sure, yeah, uh, this, absolutely. Um, but right now it's me, it's a, uh, some people from In Guardians are there. Um, and then there was supposed to be two police detectives. Um, I think there's one government guy there right now. But it's people like that. People who, you know, who infiltrate as a profession. Well, with uh, Radio Statler's first uh, attempt at selling out. <laughs> I, uh, I I will always promote things my friends are doing that I that I think are very worthwhile, and that's so that's what it is. I'm not selling out to this company. These are my friends, and they're doing something great. Well, yeah, I think uh, we'd all be in a bit of trouble if uh, we had to stop saying, "Hey, these people that we all know and think do really cool things are doing really cool things." Oh uh, right. I mean, if we didn't do that there would pretty much not be a radio statler because it's mostly like hey here's this interesting person that does interesting thing i mean there uh, would let's be, talk with that interesting person there wouldn't be hope i mean that's all hope is yeah, oh, yeah. let's have a group of uh, interesting people that do interesting things in like one place yeah, yeah. and like it's rare you see a, a talk at hope that doesn't reference someone some other interesting person who did an interesting thing yep i would agree with that that they are friends with. It's, yeah. Yeah. We're just a friendly group of people is really what it is. Yeah. Indeed. But uh, with that, I think uh, I'm going to call it a night. Uh, yeah. I think we probably and, also. Uh, Johnny uh, needs to call it a night. Yes. Yeah. Go eat something other than cactus. Oh, yeah. I, the cactus is really good here. Is it, is it really? <laughs> I highly recommend it. Well, yeah. we'll keep that in mind if we're ever out Go there. to Arizona to have some cactus. You get it in a lot of places. You may not have recognized it. It's called Napoles. It's a lot of Mexican places sell it, like authentic ones. It's N-A-P-O-L-E-S, I believe, Napoles. And that's just, it's uh, like a, 
It's usually a boiled and then grilled cactus cactus leaf. Oh, and it's really good. Well, I'll keep an eye out. Yeah, it's got kind of sweetness. Yeah, there you go. On that note. On that note. See you next time. Get hyped for hope. Hyped for hope. Hyped for hope. And there's then there's your episode title. Hyped Hyped for hope. I thought it was going to be oh fuck off. That for June. Okay, let's do it. The one before. Okay, Okay. that's fine. June's when we have everything coming together, and we're all trying to sell people on coming to our talks. We have to. uh, We have to show for ourselves. We have to submit talks. Uh, yeah. Uh, on that note, does everybody have access to the Slack? I do. Okay. Well, I just posted a draft. Um, it doesn't abstract. mean everyone's in it. Uh, <laughs> nobody's in it. I'm the only fucker that is in the Radio Statler Slack. I did it. I have it up. You have it up right now. I'm looking at it. I have. You uh... show up. Oh yeah, it's you and me and Slackbot. I have too many slacks. No I such thing as too many slacks. I don't there actually is, look at there it. is when it becomes a full time job just trying to keep track of them. I would uh, I would use at channel whenever you post information that everyone needs to see because otherwise no one's checking it. Yeah. But if they get the notification they'll go look. So just like be be flagrant with the at channels. Violate the slack rule. <laughs> At channel all the things. Yeah, don't do every sentence, but just like... <laughs> at channel, yeah. hey guys! <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alright. Now really, on all yeah, of this time for reals. How about Good night, you crazy, crazy people who sit through this for some reason. We only had one viewer for the last one, and I think it was me, so... Alright. And...